Fantastic guy, and he's really, uh, he's got something that's uh, very special because he started off with a Zippo and he's got, he ended up very strong. He did a great job. I was actually surprised when he called because he was doing well. And uh, it's an honor to have his endorsement. He's going to be working with us and he'll be working with us for a long time. Note the crowd chanting VP, VP, and Trump's glowing praise of Vivek and promise that he would be working with him in the future. Could this be it that Donald Trump's pick for vice president is none other than Vivek Ramaswamy? Gosh, I hope so. Two astute businessmen bringing their differing generational and cultural experiences into the ring to defeat sleepy, creepy Joe on top of their innate sense of mischief and fun. Talk about a dream team. But what of Nikki Haley? Well, since I last did a political video, she busied herself by refusing to say that slavery was the cause of the American Civil War when asked the question. I mean, I think it always comes down to the role of government and what the rights of the people are. And we, I will always stand by the fact that I think government was intended to secure the rights and freedoms of the people. It was never meant to be all things to all people. Government doesn't need to tell you how to live your life. They don't need to tell you what you can and can't do. They don't need to be a part of your life. They need to make sure that you have freedom. We need to have capitalism. We need to have economic freedom. We need to make sure that we do all things so that individuals have the liberties so that they can have freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom to do or be anything they want to be without government getting in the way. What do you want me to say about slavery? I don't know who she thought she was appeasing with that line of commentary, but needless to say, it didn't work. And speaking of civil war, I always thought the catalyst for the second American civil war would be the Democrats trying to take away America's guns by leaning into a similar gun buyback scheme that Australia employed in 1996. Because Australians, by and large, don't have the same kind of attachment to their guns that Americans do, given there is no constitutionally enshrined right to self-defense in our constitution, God help us, we took it pretty much lying down. That, of course, would not happen in America if the same strategy were applied for obvious reasons. Ergo, that's the logical starting point for America's Civil War 2.0. Good morning, Vietnam. Um, uh, let's see what's going on. There's a new video for the finger I put up. I didn't do it. I don't know how to do a thumbnail. And uh, it was, a, you know, a different interviewer than myself, but it's a good interviewer. Um, Sam and I were on an interview today that I think comes out Saturday, but it was, it was, um, yeah, like any interview. For me, I wish I had said things differently. And I wish I had pointed out that um, if we don't fix this problem, the whole market's coming down. I forgot to say it, but he ended it so quickly. It's anyway, you do the best you can. Um, I guess Meghan Markle got another uh, sinecure. And uh, that's where we are. Let's look at some of the prices. I'll text, let me text Tam. Um, Okay, let's see where the some of the prices are. I don't know why I'm feeling so bleary. Worse for wear and tear. Oh, you don't have to wait very long. I guess the voice is bored with his life in Twitter purgatory. Yeah, you're live right now. I'm locked up and uh, it's still three days and two hours or something like that. I think if I check, they add an hour onto it, so I stopped looking. I can't tell. Anyway, uh, me and William had a great uh, podcast interview today, and we enlightened uh, Dennis. How do you say his last name? I forgot. Uh, Keneal or Neil? I guess. It might be Neil. Neil. 
Spelled and a very nice guy. And uh, it's so funny. It's he, like he cannot leave a little voice. And he dropped the name, and uh, the woman used to work for me, and uh, we know a lot of the same people. And uh, I don't know if William picked up on this, but I was going over a naked short salad. That you're a now. ham? I picked up that you're a ham. And, uh, you did a great he, job. Uh, you did a great job. And, and he, uh, I, I went through symbols, and I just, let me pick one. I said that naked short seller kills people. Yeah. And he said, can you go, you know, talk about it? And I said, well, let's look at C-E-L-U. He put his hands on his head. And what did he say, Wayne? Do you remember? He said he invested in it. And he knew the I mean, CEO. Uh, he, In fact, he asked you the CEO's name. I mean, he told you the CEO's name. And anyway, he knew that he knew it intimately. How much money did he lose on? What was the position? What did he lose? I can't remember. Ninety percent. Oh yeah, yeah, ninety or ninety-five percent. Yeah. So and then he said, money. then he said, and of course it's my fault because I invested in the over counter. I said, no, it's not your fault. It's not supposed to be like this. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted you. No, so that's what he said. It's not my fault. And we we took him down the road saying you had nothing to do with this company. I told him not to do it, and the guy did it, and it destroyed the whole company. Yeah. And it, now you have infectious diseases that are going to go unchecked and no one's going to be saved from them. And it just murders people. And then I talked about EKSO and I showed him the robot and I showed him how it worked and how it's in a debt spiral. And it needs people to uh, uh, to help people walk in the robot. And if their options or their, their stock grants from the company go underwater, People leave because that's their money. Their bonus money disappears. So now you're in a debt spiral. Your employees are leaving. Your technology is here, but you have no one to work the robot. How do you put severely handicapped people in a robot with no one knows who knows who isn't a physical therapist? So that's how it kills people. I showed them both, both ways how it works. Then we talked about MMTLP. And we talked about, and I said, it's a dividend, a special dividend. That's what got these guys. Yeah, and he, he wanted to know what's the best way to end this. William went over all the hardcore technical <laughs> things they need to do. It'll never be in the interview. <laughs> Hopefully. And I said, just settle the trades. You yeah. can't win. They can't continue. You can't kill a company in one day. They can't do it on Monday. Because on Tuesday, if they don't deliver it, they get bought in. So if they sell it down from five to two, the next day the stock's going to go from two to eight and they're going to lose all their money buying them back in. So again, you can't do it. Stock settlement is the easiest way. We can go into all the technical things about the uptick rule and this and that that William brought up, which are all good points. Enforcement, this, that. If you, if you flood the market with counterfeit shares, A, you go to jail and B, we're going to buy you in immediately. That's it. There's nothing left to say. That's pretty much that'll fix the whole. Thing. Well, the one thing I wish I had said is this problem is not just MMTLP. It's not just a meme stock. It's everywhere. And if we don't fix it, it's the system's going to come down. It's going to fix itself. The whole thing will right. collapse. But anyway, I you didn't forgot say. you forgot to say that, like you forgot to ask my questions. Exactly. I forgot. So I tried to get as much in without stepping all over William. I, you know, I gave him uh, half the floor. So I haven't been memorizing my lines for twenty-three years either. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's funny that one of his one of the people that he worked at CNBC with, we both know her. Then I pick out the stock that he lost ninety five percent of his money in. Yeah, that was something. And he you got it was also it. he knew one of your employees. He knew he knew who a guy you had hired away from an organization, and he knew someone else you knew maybe at the Wall Street Journal. He he really knew you. Sir, you guys are in the same. I speed. told you Wall Street's a small place. Yeah. And, you know, I told him, I says, listen, I understand financial news. I'm an expert on it. I understand it. And uh, he, I memorized all these stories for 24 years. I says, it goes back to uh, if anyone questions, does it really exist? I says, he said Forbes was a shield for the shorts. 
He said that. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he did. said Forbes, Barons. He Turn, said there's a couple of them. Yeah. And he said he had a run in with uh, with Chanos. And I educated him quickly how to combat that if Chanos ever goes after him again. Just ask him about DeVita, dog, dog Victor Apple. And I gave him the symbol. I said he called it a fraud. And he yelled and made a big noise. He knocked it down $5. I've never heard about him again. Never said again. In so the again, where was the DeVita. fraud call? And we talked about Tesla and how, uh, you know, the shorts went after that. And if Elon Musk didn't fight back, look at all the good things he's done from that point where they were trying to knock him out when they said his batteries were on fire. The fake New York Times story. I said, you know, these people, their motive is to destroy. Destroy at all costs. Knock stocks down. I'm telling you, I shorted for people back in the day. And I bought puts with them. And I lost 95% of the time because stocks didn't go down when we, th we always thought they would short and they would go down. Something was coming quickly, but these guys were playing fundamentals and they thought the fundamentals didn't work, which I thought was, you know, at now looking at it, these guys played the right way. Today, they short the stock in eight minutes after they short it. There's a, a fake report and a, and a bear rate two minutes after they do it. Very different. I, and I told you I shorted a stock. One of the most famous ones I shorted was U.S. Surgical. It took a year and a half or two years before it crashed. Two years. I lost all my puts like 80 times on it. And, that, and I was the short seller in the stock. I was the biggest short in the name. And I never made a dime off of it. Never. I made commission off of it, but I never made any money buying puts on it. I should have went long. I would have made more. But again, that was a great interview. It went great, yeah. and uh, you did it. You did a great job on it. It was very good. I don't know what else we spoke about. We went get through so we touched so many things. I talked about the dividends with Dole Foods. I compared it to the airlines, where the airlines overbook a seat. If they overbook a three hundred dollars seat, they may have to pay back a thousand or ten thousand dollars just to make pay for their mistake. They made a mistake. They make a shorter the seat. They pay for it. On Wall Street, they make a short of stock, they just sell more. They don't want to pay for it. They just they just steal your money. That's it. You know, I, I told them I spoke with the law enforcement. I said, there's no one left for me to call but the Canadian Mountie police. And they told me they don't even think I could do that with the uh, with the, the people in charge of Canada anymore. They won't even show up. No one shows up. We talked about the loophole. We talked about The Economist from 2011. I forgot to say about Cox talking about uh, Chairman Cox talking about fraud in 2008. I told him about my protest in Times Square. I showed him the signs that I made. Uh, we talked about MMTLP again, about my diagram, the DTCs in the middle and all the brokerage firms around it. I said, it's easy. It's musical chairs. Stop the music, which they did in MMTLP, and just count up the investors. If the investors is more investors than shares available, who's selling all the different shares? Who's selling them all? And at the end, I brought up uh, that stock TELO, which went public on Thursday. One guy owned the million shares of the seven. He bought he put up seven million dollars. He bought a million shares at seven. They drove the stock down, and one day from seven to below five, the gentleman owned a hundred percent of the float. So if he filed, he has to file that he owns 100% of the float. But the 100% doesn't exist anymore because these guys sold 300,000 new shares into the marketplace. So he doesn't own 100% anymore of the float. He owns 70%. Another 700,000 shares, and this guy only owns 50%. So they created a whole new float, even though this guy owns 100%. And I said to him, you don't have to go back years. This happened Thursday, and that's when he couldn't believe it, right, William? He was surprised. Yeah. But you can't get any clearer proof than that. I said, it's right there. So as far as educating someone on it, and he wanted to know, and, and, and uh, you know, an MMTLP, what's my axe to grind in it? And William said he owned it. He's been there for a long time. And he asked me, I said, I don't own a share of it. Because you're just fighting to help these people? I said, yes. I don't own a share. I know people that own it. I have nothing to do with it. I said I helped them get them the attorneys. I helped them get them uh, 
on Charlie Payne. I did whatever I can. I put it on the truck. I did everything. I don't know these people. They're all great people. I met them, and you know what? They deserve. They deserve to have this fixed. And uh, he couldn't believe it that I would do that. Anyway, William, anything you want to say? Um, no, you you got it all. He was he did a really good job. He seems to be in the fight, um, Dennis. What's the name of his blog? Uh, what upsets me? What's really bugging me or something? Anyway, the the video he had a producer on. It'll well, come out Saturday, is, I think. The guy is a serious guy. He worked yeah, for the yeah. Journal. He worked for CNBC. He worked for Fox. He understands it. <laughs> he was very impressed with Ham. He wanted to do Ham's life story as a uh, as a uh, eight part mini series, but Ham said, "I'm not interested." No interest. He wanted to know. I said, "Listen, if I want it to work. I want to disappear. I could kill us. I'm not. I said, you could get all the medals you want. Good luck. I don't want anything." And that's what I said. Correct. Yeah, I said I'll do it. He said, "I'm not interested in you, William." No, no I didn't. <laughs> I didn't have. Uh, um, he, he said your hair was too nice, William. He said something said, about the, hair. Look at his hair; it's flowing. He said today, it's just it needs a hair. <laughs> it needs cut, as they say in Pennsylvania. He, um, he said that William had it up in rollers last night. It was all curly. <laughs> I don't know what this stock BGLC is. It's up seven hundred percent apparently. BGLC. What's the symbol? Boy, God, Larry, Charlie. Wow, look at that. Someone brought it to my attention this morning. It's 60 cents. It was up 20 cents. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this guy should be a shrink, Martin Smith. Ham is having Twitter withdrawals. No kidding. Yes, I am. No kidding. His brain, I'm, his brain I'm cracking is up. formed. I'm talking to myself. I'm standing in the street throwing snowballs at the buses and they go by. And his family is <laughs> going crazy. Would you just <laughs> shut up? We don't need to hear it again. Someone brought the attention to me, this other stock, you know, I don't know that one, but they told me H-O-L-O -O this morning, and it went up to $43 as another one. I feel like we're waiting at the airport where, like, uh, you know, at JFK, and the, there's a long line of planes taking off, and we're at LaGuardia, I'll make it LaGuardia, and we're like, we don't know what number we are to take off. You know, that's what it seems like. Finger motion, someone put a great post up there saying, it looks like the selling is dried up. I've been saying that for days. There's no more selling. It's just it's just going back and forth, the same nonsense. Uh, I'm watching the ZJYL open. It went to 12. They knocked it back down. ZJYL, let's see where that is. It's 834. They're trying to get it red on the day again for the ninth attempt. And, uh, you know, the stock went to 12. 12 times 20 is what, 240? So anybody who was crying that they wanted to get out and, you know, I, we don't control the prices. You had another opportunity to sell and make a few bucks. I don't think anybody paid up to 300. If you did pay up to 300, you're still down a little bit of money. And I don't think it's over yet. It seems like these things come in waves. And uh, you see what happens there. And uh, so it is what it is. I can't post about it. One guy says I'm not posting about it anymore like I shut my big mouth. That's not true. I can't post. When I do, I'll be back up. Uh, you know, I think GDC is going to be the next one to go. It's my opinion. I think that if ZJYL goes, GDC will go, and then the crowd is going to move into finger motion, and then we can move down to GTII, which brings us to GTII. There's been some interesting volume in trades in this one. Someone mm -hmm. put up a bid for 100,000 shares, and someone sold 100,000 shares. Think about that. It was a 21 cents, I think it was, a 21 something. Does that sound strange to you, William? Someone puts up a bid for 100,000 and someone sells 100,000? 50% of the volume in one trade today, right? I think it's William? a highly, highly efficient uh, right. market. The work buyer and work. seller had, they, they called each other up yesterday and said, can we meet at 1032 today? and cross 100,000 shares. Sure we can. And that's what they did. So my friends, that could be a reason, that could be a reason why, why what to call is uh, uh, basically a reason why uh, Alpine is dragging their feet because they're rolling or moving or washing trades to go someplace else. That's what it looks like to me, right?
Yeah. Um, some someone's asked you what's the title of the podcast and when is it gonna? I I don't know. When we get it, we'll let you know. I I can't. I don't know. They told me to be eleven o'clock. I was there eleven o'clock. That was it. Um, I don't care who I get on the phone. You get me on the phone. I just start talking. Go, and that was it. Uh, oh yeah, Happy Fat Tuesday. It's true. Is today? Yeah, it's today. No. Well, as we say in New York, it's a snow day, so uh, you know. So that's what's going on here. AP wants to know what's your gut feeling on when ZJYL will run. It looks like it's warming up its engines. It had that spike and pull back. You know, if I was trading. I would buy the dip and sell the rip. It's pretty easy. You're getting a pattern right now, right? Buy the dip, sell the rip. Buy the dip, sell the rip. You may you may miss it one time, so I would tell you if you're going to buy the dip, you leg into it. What does the leg into it mean? If I want to buy ten thousand. I buy a thousand at eight fifty, a thousand at eight and a quarter, a thousand at eight, and just keep working it down. So you get a low average. If I only get 2,000 shares and it takes off, I have 2,000 shares. But buying as it swings down, it makes me, uh, it makes me, it makes my bet safer because my average is lower. You don't just jump in and think it's going to stop and turn. And you say, well, that happened so many times. Look at the video today. They drove it down to 696. They turned around, squeezed it up to 734. Talk about getting paid in three minutes. That that's the game. Everybody wants to play that game, but it's so dangerous when you play in the video because if you're wrong, you're going to get whooped for twenty dollars a share, and there's some major losses and some major victories there. That's a dangerous game. Someone just said they got ZJYL red. I guess it's right. I guess it's right there. It's still green on my. Um, someone's asking me how the interview go and I said Mama William I said it 10 times the um, the volume is 1 million shares basically a little over that's nowhere near enough that they've covered the uh, rumored short position say it again what was that somebody said somebody's moaning that this is just short covering and that they're just will never win it's just they run it up and pull it back to cover shorts i don't think a million one five is enough to cover diddly i know people that have been buying it so again they're buying fives and tens so you could say they covered it all but if they're short if we said the short was 10 million times 20 is what william 200 million so if they bought every share today, they still have 198 million to go. So whoever said that. Oh, this is an interesting thing. This guy's saying, you say the TLO float is a million, brokers show 18 million. But actually, if you look on Yahoo, it says something like 30 million. Uh, but it doesn't show anything else. It doesn't show outstanding I have shares. A, I have something straight. Someone posted it to me. Hold on a second. I'll it's a it weird. Right now. It's almost intentionally confusing. Where is that gentleman who posted that to me? To me. Hold on a second. Give me one sec. Easy, William. Take it easy. Now I can't find it. Someone posted me the exact story. Uh, one person to float is one million shares at seven. Hold on, send me a photo. Here it goes. Tell more pharmaceuticals, one million shares priced at seven dollars each. That sounds like uh is it a secondary or an IPO? It was an IPO. Okay. It says. One million share IPO, William. What does that sound like to you? Sounds like an IPO. Um, initial public offering. If you if you pull up Yahoo and look at the financials, the statistics, it's weird. It shows 
shows more. But anyway, it doesn't it's not worth arguing about. I just you could show them where I just took a picture of it for you. Um here's another story. I posted it for you. I just sent it to you. Did you, you just both them on your phone? Did you just admit to being a short? Yes. All I'm right. only five foot nine and a half. It's it's all over, guys. Ham is working for the shorts. What are you talking about? I told you I shorted when I was a broker. I had short sale orders. What was I? I got paid commission, like the guy from Morgan Stanley, right? I got paid commission to borrow the shares and short it. I said that I did it for big players. They did not make it short because I had to borrow the shares before I was allowed to do it. Oh my God! You are a traitor. You're really a short. I had to put on my ticket. You admitted to, to being a short. This is crazy. The guy said. I had to circle on my ticket. We used to have to write a ticket, William. I don't know when you started. You know. I had to write tickets. Ah, oh, so with that when you sell and them, we you had to put them in new pneumatic tubes. You and had my to put, AE yeah. number was six nine six nine. AE6969, please check your <laughs> tube station. Well, I was on the trading desk. I didn't do that. But we had a circle. When you called in, they say sell 1 million shares of XYZ, sell it short. I had to mark the ticket, sell short. Then I clocked the ticket, and they say, I would call the back office, can I borrow these shares? And they would tell me, yes, you can, and here's the number, and you bore, this is the date, the time, and who I borrowed it from. Bang. That was it. Then I started selling it short. Yeah, that's it, how it went. It needs Today, to be put. Best, it used to need to be put in writing, and you had to know. Otherwise, you couldn't take the order. Now, now they don't care. Public. They just they do it. They kill you first and check later on. That's it's the old do. Hillary Clinton approach: act first, ask permission later. They don't even what ask permission. They they just lie. I just lied. So, Corey. I borrowed it from Tony. Tony said it. Well, who's Tony? He doesn't work here anymore. I don't know. Billy, Bobby, that's what they're saying. Okay, no problem. Just an honest mistake. He's like uh, Hal Mintz. Oh, or Goldman Sachs. We mismarked our tickets only 60 billion times. Oh, it was a mistake. We forgot. There's nothing I could do about that. So anyway, we're reporting. Corey Hayes, Corey Hayes says Kristen Shaughnessy just did. An interview with Neil the other day. Well, guess what? She set it up for the hamster. That's, That's right. what the best part of what's going on here, people. If you know someone in law enforcement, if anyone knows anyone in Homeland Security, the Homeland Security is going after people that are selling fake NFL T-shirts. Fake NFL T-shirts. God forbid you buy a Pat Mahone's jersey for a hundred dollars and it's a counterfeit. You go to jail. Who's Pat Mahone? He's the guy who's a short seller that plays football. <laughs> if you ever sell a fake counterfeit Louis Vuitton bag, they'll electrocute you. A fake Rolex, forget it, they'll hang you in Times Square. Sell a billion shares of stock and steal fifty billion dollars, you're a hedge fund. And you're you're uh, appraised all over the world. You're so right. rich. You own all these condos. And even if you're an ugly guy who went to Harvard and couldn't pull a bird, all of a sudden you're the richest man in on Wall Street. And uh, that's and that's the difference between them and us. And listen, if I knew that you could just do this and it was free and you have no worries about it in the world, why would I ever try to do the other side? I can go out there and destroy companies. Who cares if you're not going if you're gonna get a disease? It's not killing my family, it's killing your family, right? Go look at the CELU, infectious diseases. William and I spoke yesterday. There's the plague in Oregon. There's some crazy disease the in the body plague for the first time in 10 years is back. All right, in Oregon, yeah. and we have something going on in Alaska, and in Michigan, we had some guy with some black lung disease. And we have, he had. we have uh, notorious gangs fighting in New York from Venezuela and somewhere I, else. Listen, let me ask you a question about that, Twitter. I posted the story about that, 
about the woman shot in Times in Times Square, and I said, if you come to New York, be careful because you can get shot. That's what I said. It invaded somebody's sense of safe place. And here it is, the next day on a subway platform, they're shooting people in in rush hour. You think you, you think that was a panic? You scene? were inciting violence. And I incited violence. I'm telling people, be careful coming to this loony bin city, which was never like this. It was never this crazy. Well, you've got you've defunded the, the police force. You've got most of the cops frozen into inactivity by that that uh, law enforcement action in Minneapolis or wherever it was. So and then you on top of that, you bring in a few million people that don't even speak English. They're, what's what's to worry about? Well, listen, <laughs> and today it's snowing on them. So can you imagine hanging out in the streets when you came from Central America? Now you're here, no home, no job, and you're hanging out. And they're gang members, and now we have them all. Trump was right. They've let all the prisoners out. They dropped them on us. And now we have them. So, again, I, I was reporting on that, and for that I got banned seven days. So I, I'm in Twitter jail because I reported on, as I feel as a New Yorker, and I go through Times Square a lot. All right. I'm that's all the activity that I, everything that I do in Wall Street now, there's no more Wall Street. It's in Midtown. So Midtown is around with Times Square. If you're not familiar with it, by Rockefeller Center, all the restaurants, everyone meets there now. That's the activity spot. It used to be downtown, but no one's down there anymore. It's empty. I mean, I don't know who the hell lives down there. I don't, people don't even, I don't even know anybody who drives down there anymore. But uh, so, but again, when you walk around there and you see a gang of 30 guys standing on a corner, I think that's uh, a sign that you need to cross and go away from that that spot. And I am very aware when I'm in New York and I do that. And I was with there with a friend of mine who's not from New York and I says, cross the street and follow me and let's go into this bar because that is not a friendly gang over there. And you have to get off the streets when you see that. That's just the way it is. That's the way New York was when I first went up for training. I was warned, never look any them at them, whoever they are. Don't look them in the eye, and and walk the other direction. You know, walk away. Don't don't get involved. So William, I'm looking at this while we're talking about you running away like a sissy. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, finger motion, they just hit. Isn't the he one. the president of Mexico? Yeah, 2020 bid, they hit for 5,000 shares or whatever it was. And all of a sudden there's a bid, a 219 for 14,200, right? And you sit there and say, if someone's bidding for 14,200, who would offer 100 shares at 2020? There's nobody would do that because they know there's a buyer there. The worst you can do is take the 100 shares at 220. If you get nervous, you can always sell it at 219 and lose a penny. So no one would ever offer at 220. That is the short on top of the short. I believe the short is trying to cover here because that is a sign. They would move away. They're trying to get you to hit the bid is what they're trying to do, that there is a seller. So they don't offer stock. They just put 100 shares there to convince KYP, hurry up and hit that bid, KYP, get nervous. That's what they're trying to do, all right? In the old days, anybody would take that 100 shares. Why? Why wouldn't you? The worst you can do is turn around as a trader and sell it and lose a penny on 100 shares. That's the worst you can do. So that tells you that that's criminal activity in the marketplace right there. I won't even, you know, get into GTI. GTI has been at two hundred thousand shares, a hundred traded in one trade. There's nothing going on here. Do you um, think? Yes, I think TELO is going to go north of the IPO price. Which I, I think should tell price. everyone about your successful trade in that. And TL, I was and yesterday. I was on the TLO hits a new low. They were throwing it out the window. I bought it for my cousin, my daughter, and they bought it at 5.35, and I just threw it out there for sale yesterday at 7, and the stock popped up to 7. I was in the car on the phone with you. I didn't even know until I got home. Paid 5.35, and uh, 
sold it at seven. And that's how you buy the dips, sell the rips. It was by accident. I knew it has to go back to seven because the guy paid seven for the IPO price. And my brother is a pretty good chartist. And he says, just based on what he sees, if it goes through 703, it's going to nine. So I don't know what he sees, but it's only trading three goddamn days. And I expect, I expect the company to come out with news soon because all, all these IPOs come out. They just don't go quiet. There has to be some news coming. So I think anything below seven is a buy. And when it gets above seven, you can make your own determination on what the news that comes out with. That's it. That's how you trade. Is Finger a buyout candidate? No. The only people that could buy it would be a Chinese company. So I don't know on that side who it would be. I have no idea. You need the relationships with China. And I, I'd rather it not be a takeover candidate because I think the opportunities to do business China is a much bigger opportunity for this public company than being acquired. So if someone came in and bought them for $25, okay, you know, our top end of our my return would be $25. I think if they just continue with their business and their relationships and build out what they say they're building out. There was another video, but William, you sent it to me, and it's on Twitter of the CEO speaking at some other conference, or wherever he spoke on February something. There was an interview video. with a IR guy that I mean, I, I this mean, guy does yeah. it as a he does it with lots of companies, but he's very. It's a good interview. It's a very good interview. So he put up. And there was some other interesting things he said in there, but it's right there. And if you follow what he's saying and he builds out what he's doing, okay, I think the stock could be 10 times bigger than $25. I think he can go to the moon, but that's, you know, I'm not here for a day trade. I'm here for the long haul and it's been a long haul. And the only thing that's damaged the stock is Lynn partners and their friends. And I'm going to say it again, Lynn Partners, clean your fucking ears. We know it's not you, you fucking jerk off. We know it's not you, it's your fucking cousin next to you who you signed the papers where I won't short it and you give it to them to sell short. So if you ever want to step out your big mouth, we all know what you're doing. So your game is busted. So go fuck yourself. Excuse my French. He's not a sissy. Um, Gannat Legal Advice said hello to you. Uh, how with that guy? Um, we build shows seventeen point six nine million float on T E L O. Well, I I don't know. That's it's a conundrum. I sent you the photos. I know you did, but hey, they I mean, those are they were <laughs> they're they're obviously nefarious photos. E O I P O. I don't get it. I don't get it. Here's a guy after your own heart, M. Casey. Absolutely insane that regulators allow this predatory practice of short selling. Retail investors and companies are getting it destroyed. Ban all short selling. Ban all is- short selling. Ban all. Short selling is, everyone keeps telling you, short selling is needed for the marketplace because they give us information that we don't have. I can tell you right now, and I told many people, if you're along the video, start making sales because when they pull the plug, it's going to drop a lot. Do you need you made two, three hundred points. You need another 10, 20 more points, 20 more dollars. Get out. All right. That's the way I look at things. And the short sellers are going to sit there. We're telling you it's overpriced here. Well, you have to be a moron to not figure that the stock has had a major run from 450 to almost $734 in what two months, three months. Again. It's a great business. They got chips, whatever, this, that, and everything. All these hot things always get hot and they disappear for a while. So it's, the risk reward is you know way past it. And that's how I look at it. T-E-L-O, 32 million free float on Yahoo. Um, 
And it's impossible. I just I just sent you the thing. You met the guy who told you what it was. This guy, the humor, the hilarious humor, the hilarious humor. I'm glad she was able to set it up for you, the two of you. Hopefully the interview has a ton of reach and is able to help. Yeah, Corey, I think Ham did a great job. I don't think I'll make the I'll, off the cutting floor because um, I got, too, oh, you're gonna I got a bit, you, you, I got a bit too, strident. You, I got started. You're just too technical. You started dropping big words, and not, people don't want to understand. If people, yeah, I drop big words. This like, is a bullshit. This is a bullshit baby game. This is all bullshit. This stuff. It's like novice stuff. It's musical chairs. You stop the music. If there's ten seats, we can only. When you stop the music, there's ten people. We can't have twenty people trying to sit in ten seats. That's it. There's here's the name of his. Here's the name of his show. What's bugging me? By Dennis Neal on most platforms. What's bugging me? I'm going to sign up and become a subscriber. Oh, Lordy. Levon. Levon. Uh, Dad, anything else? I guess Mahomes is a hero. Um, if Dirty Mato signed on. Yeah, you wanted to know how the conference call went with the interview. It went great. And I told you to sign on before. So, again, show up on time so I don't have to repeat it again. And that's a, a, <laughs> a said on the last his last call, take your profits in ZJYL and buy GDC. Um, okay, listen, you can do what you want. If you've got profits, you can do what you want. I, I think they're likely to both run at the near. I agree with you, Eunice. They're probably going to run at the same time. They'll be. They're going to go at the same time. What you know? I don't know what's happening. ZJYL. If you're trading, you buy the dip, sell the rips. If you buy a thousand shares, sell five hundred. Even if you make a dollar on it, if you paid eight, you could sell five hundred at nine, and you now own it at seven. You do that three times, which the stock has given you plenty of swings to do that. You can own the stock at three right. by the end of the day. You know, if you came in this morning and sold it at 12 and bought it back at 10, you made yourself, you know, from yesterday's close, it was seven yesterday, eight. You made three, four points. You buy it back at 10, you own it at seven. You keep lowering your costs. That's all you can keep doing. Yeah. That's trading. That's how Wall Street is about lowering your costs and putting money in your pocket. And if you break even or lose a few pennies because you're nervous, that's a win. That's how Wall Street is. You just don't buy every stock and they just go straight to the moon. I told you I paid GDC. I paid three dollars and eighty cents. I've been underwater. My daughter bought it perfect. Oh, she I, she wasn't in it. I put her in it. I put my wife's friend in it at two dollars and eleven cents the other day. I mean, so well, there's nothing I could say. Sometimes you get in wrong. Sometimes you get in right. That's the way it is. And if I didn't believe it, I would have dumped it. I, I'm a good loser. I know how to take a loss. Cannot Legal's advice says Fingers data business could be huge and they will expand outside of China. And then he got that from the interview. Yes, he did say that. He did say they're expanding in Vietnam, I think he said. Yeah. They're going to do it on the Ho Chi Minh Trail. That's where it's going, uh, Richard. <laughs> Cambodia. He said about Cambodia. He talked about uh, Vietnam. Ryan's he calling you out. Ryan says, but Jeremy Frommer said there was no suspicious trading activity from Lynn Partners. He said the source that guy. Listen, I was I spoke with him when he want, when he was speaking at that conference, the disruptive technology conference. I helped him with his speech. He read it to me seven times. He got in that conference and he wanted to fight and be and wanted to fight back against the criminals. He had a big job working for Ron Shear. He learned how to write, run day trading operations. He knows that he knows how it works. He's being he's he's being coy about it because Lynn Partners gives him scratch, gives him money to survive. He doesn't want to he's, go work at Walmart. 
He doesn't want to quit what he's doing. So he goes back to them to get more money. I can't blame him. He's got a job. He's got employees. He's got a family. That's his business. But exactly. his job is to protect the shareholders. And you know what? His, he was rewarded for not protecting the shareholders. And that's his business. That's not mine. Maybe with this question, you can talk about your own philosophy of buying these stocks. Several people, Tom is is the target here. He says, Ham, do you still believe ZJYN goes off? ZYJL, ZJYL goes off this week. Do you still believe well, it? I you? told you yesterday, I heard it was going to move today. I heard that yesterday, right? If you were on the call. Well, I heard correct. you say it. And it popped from seven and a half and went to 12. I don't. I don't control any of these swings. You know, when they come, they come. I don't know. The people I know have not sold a share. 1.1 million shares is nothing, nothing, no volume in the stock. Um, I'm sure there are people are buying it. I'm sure the company has now met the qualification of getting shareholders, correct, William? Yeah, yeah. So now it, it's met its NASDAQ requirement. So now it has shareholders. If the people that were in it that I know never sold it at 300 200 at at eight dollars it's what 20 times that's 160 bucks you think they're selling it now i don't think so if lend and their cousins are short with naked or with synthetics it doesn't cost them or doesn't cost them to hold those positions is that correct the cost incurred on them no oh they're paying they're, they're paying through the nose for it Nothing on Wall Street is free. You know what? If you're a criminal and the mafia is next door to you and they know you're stealing money, what do you think they're going to do? Knock on your door and say, hey, you got a nice honorable business here. You're making 10000 a week. Uh, we want our cut. We want 1500 And they're going to say, well, we don't want to pay you. Okay, then we're going to break your windows and you're not going to be in business anymore. That's what a prime broker does. That's what Alpine used to do. Alpine probably sh was shaking down every criminal that opened up an account like the Kramers and you want to do business as uh, where your prime broker will look the other way, but we're going to look the other way. And when I look the other way, I'm going to hold my hand out and you better put something in it. And I'm sure make that, make that, I'll, I'll mark that down in stone that that's what was going on because there's no way Alpine is going to let the Kramers operate a crime family under their umbrella without making money from it. A lot of money. I would, if I was stealing $10 million and I had to give Alpine two, what are you kidding me? I'll do it all day long. Give me eight, you take two, and they run interference for me. I'll do it all day long. And everybody on the phone would do the same thing. I would do it, give them five million, give them half of it. Because without them, you can't exist. And that's why the cream is along with their buddies, that's trying to open up their own prime broker. Remember that? We heard the lawyers. They hired a lawyer to do it. They were filing Kramers and putting up $4 million. We heard that, too, because they need the prime broker to hide, to run interference for them. Goldman Sachs is not going to take them in. How are you doing, Goldman? We're a bunch of criminals. Can you take our business? Oh, sure. Come on in here. That's not going to happen. That's Wall Street, my friends. You have to pay for everything. Nothing is free. It, can you talk about Fidelity telling investors that if ZJYL goes high in price and you sell it, you're going to be responsible for locating shares if Fidelity doesn't That was have the other the day when they were doing the split. Yeah. I don't think they were, they were concerned anymore. that if the stock took off and you did not have real shares in your account, you sold it. Let's say the stock you know, when it split, I forgot what its price was. I can't remember. Let's say it split from 200 and opened up at 10 or 20. Let's say it opened at 20 and it runs back up to 40. They're saying if you didn't have it in your account, you sold it and you get bought in. For example, let's say I own 10,000 shares. The stock opens at 20 and it's 40. I sell 10,000. Two days later, someone's calling me up. Hey, you got to deliver that stock you sold. Fidelity saying, screw you. You're going to be liable for it, not us. Meanwhile, they're the ones that haven't settled the first trade. Think about that. 
and they're blaming you because you bought it. They changed the rules so that they never lose. Are trading halts a bad thing or a good thing for retail? Uh, not a bad thing. They stop. They, what they do is they try to stop the momentum is what they're trying to do, down and up. Now, the funny thing on the downside, finger motion, they marked it down every day, okay? They were marking it down between 8.5% and 9.5% on the day because they didn't want it. They don't want it to go below at 10%. It starts to become noticeable. People start to notice it. So if you go back and look, like right now, finger motion is down 5.58%. And they stopped. They don't want it. They, can't, they don't want that number too high. The percentage down is a big number. That's a big thing. Um, it's an interesting question. On the whatever it is, 500, 600 million shares short in MMTLP, are the shorts currently paying interest on it? I don't know. Uh, that's a good That's a good question. I'm sure there's a big problem behind the scene. I think there's a police rope around that whole thing. On the other hand, the brokers, the prime brokers, and the are co probably collecting free oh, interest on the free credit on money, balance. Interest mo on your money. They're probably laughing every day. Yeah. And rates have gone from nearly zero to 5% while we've waited. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure that there's a lot of money being made while that's laying still because the investors are getting nothing for it. And that's why William says that they're going to pay through the nose. And if anybody gets a settlement with that, they should be screaming and make them pay through the nose on every on everything, every share that you held that you that you own in that stock or op, whatever it is, dividend. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. If the shorts had already covered, we wouldn't be seeing paid shills bashing. I agree with that. Oh, and MMTLP? Well, in in any of these, but particularly ZJYL. Listen, again, it, all these people that are yelling, why would anybody yell? Okay. Half of these people are never in these names, but they're yelling. What we're doing is exposing their livelihood. They're going to lose their livelihood. That's the problem here. All these guys have been making money all these years by stealing. You could be the smallest fish here and make 100000 a year because they pay you to post them on Twitter. They say the same thing all the time, that people are pumping the stock. Because we gave our opinion, we pumped the stock. That's number one. We're paid shills. Everyone's getting paid from everybody. That's number two, right? They always yell the company's a scam. A scam. You're, you're a bag holder. These are the words they use all the time. It's the same word. Bag holder is a clear sign that they're a basher. That's the number one word. They don't even have another word they can use. They always use you're a bag holder. Hurry up. You're holding the bag. You have a bag of shit is what they're saying. Sell it. Hurry up. That's what they're, they're trying to save you from holding a bag of shit. That's what they're saying to you. This has been going on. I told you, it started on the Raging Bull 20 years, 24 years ago. It was a message board, but it was only people on there were criminals. Now I'm happy to say that we're the tide has turned. There's thousands of us, and there's what, 200 morons coasting all day long? Who would waste their time all day trying to save me? And ZJYL, I don't even own it. Yet they're attacking me that I'm pumping ZJYL. I'm not pumping, I'm just bringing it to your attention on a forward split and let's see what happens. And guess what? It's it's something's going on here. It's popped up. It's got you can't it's not going away, that's for shit sure. But yet they want to bash me because I'm pumping and I don't even own it. He's pumping some shit Chinese name at him. He's a piece of shit. He's a he's a paid shill. Okay. That's what they say. They think that we don't know the game. That's the funny thing. And we're not backing away. I don't care what anybody says. I could care less. William gets these people on the call. They yell at us. I tell William, hang up. Get lost.
Go tell somebody else that could kill us. Do your talking, walking. Um, right. If you buy calls, can you use them as your locate in order to sell short? You have to convert it to stock. Actually, you I think you can make a deal, depending on how big a account you are. Yeah, I think you, you can go short deal. stock in your account and yeah. hedge it with calls and they'll probably think, go think, along I, with you. But they'll force you to, you got to execute that trade. You and, gotta, yeah, you got to execute it and you've probably got a heck of a carrying cost of that, you know. Yeah, they're, gonna, yeah they're, they're definitely going to jam you, but they, uh, they, they definitely want you to convert it. And that's what they talked about, the squeeze and GameStop, what they were doing. People were buying calls tons of them the market makers were selling you calls naked right and how did they squeeze gamestop you think it was retail when i described this trade you i'm just going to go past everybody here i told you this was an institutional short squeeze right right they were buying calls and then converting it into stock you're allowed to convert you can go from an option and you can buy, you could say, hey, I got, you know, 100 calls. I want to convert it into 10,000 shares. And the market maker has to then deliver the shares. What does he have to do, the market maker, in order to do that? He's got to go buy the stock. Yeah. And they have to deliver it. And if you do it, with, they were doing it 50,000 calls. The gamma the time. And that's Sometimes. how they did it. Sometimes. And that's, did you tell me that was retail doing that? If retail... How does retail afford a hundred or two hundred dollars stock? They can't do it. Even if I converted it, I couldn't do it. I have to pay for it, right? Because now I got stock. Those are hedge funds doing it. And I keep watching finger motion. It was a hundred shares. They took it and they came. Now it's eight hundred shares at two twenty, and the bid is seventeen thousand shares now. They're warming up to watch a trade at two nineteen, like there's no tomorrow. Doesn't mean it's going down, but they're looking to do something here. So I'm watching it. Um, ask him if he could wake up early and do a pre-market talk so we could get a jump on some trades. I'm always up early, but no one else is. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just, you know, again, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, I guess I, I should just go on 24 hours a day. Seven. <laughs> Listen, you just jot down the things we say, you know, I'm giving you tips on little things like, you know, I, again, I'm just looking at this CELO. The company went, it was the IPO was $7, 1 million shares. My friend knows the guy who bought the whole thing. What's the next thing that comes from an IPO? There has to be some news. So next thing that usually comes out is good news. So it's still below the IPO price, okay? And I still think there's got to be some news from the people of the company, what exactly is going on here. So I expect that any day. There's got to be some positive news on this company. That's one thing. ZJYL, it opened this morning, was trading at 8. I turned around, it was 12. I don't even know what happened, why it went up. But it just popped and went to 12. And hopefully some people, I spoke to two people, I told them to sell it. They did, and they bought it back. They bought it back to somewhere like nine fifty. So if they sold it at 11 they got $2 in profit. They bought it back, and they got the same position again. That's what this guy did, David Smith. He he gambled today. He sold every share of ZJYL at ten thirty five. He got nervous when it broke 11 but he bought back in and added 1,000 shares at $9. Listen, as long as you're in the black and you got your same position, you're doing great. That's what that's how you do it. I can't, you know, I, again, I'm frozen solid in GDC. I'm underwater. I can't do anything. I don't have any more money to add to it. I do believe that ZJYL and all these crazy Chinese names that are exploding, it's going to come around again. And I've always told that I heard that this thing was going to explode to 50 bucks. That's all I know. Will I stay to 50? I doubt it. When it starts screaming, I told you, I buy the dips, I sell the rips. How far does it go? I don't know. We'll see what happens. That's all I know about it. Finger motion, I've been studying the company for years. 
the videos are right there. They're telling you what they're doing. Yesterday, there was a company. I forgot the symbol, William. I'll give it to you in a second. Tony sent it to me. See if I can find Tony. BMR, he told me yesterday, or Mary Robin. I haven't got a chance to look into that. It's it, they must have killed it down to eleven. It was up to, I think it was up to four, thirty-four dollars yesterday. And uh, trying to see what it was one year. So one year it's been doing nothing, and then it exploded. BMR. They did a deal with Nvidia. I told you yesterday on the call, small companies, very hard to get a big partner. They got the big, they got, they got the holy grail of partners, right? NVIDIA. I don't know what the terms of the deal, did they, whatever the deal was, did they make money today? I doubt it, right? And that's NVIDIA and BMR. Small company, got a big partner. That's outstanding. The company was, everyone in the company was rewarded for investing in BMR while they were designing whatever they were doing. It went to $31 for them, $34. It's got, it's, it's been knighted by NVIDIA. Finger Motion was knighted by uh, uh, Munich Re, Pacific Life Free, China Mobile, China Unicon, and AIZ. Five times. And it had, and all we got is Lynn Partner spitting on it, selling, 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 trying to get people to sell it at all costs. That's what we got, the finger motion. That's all because of a toxic lender that's been paid off and is gone, but they're, they're still stuck in the stock, and that's what we have to deal with. And when they do break, the game will be over for them. And the company is going the right way, and that's why I'm here. Again, NVIDIA and BMR, it works when there's no toxic scumbag in the middle. Finger Motion has the toxic scumbag and five partnerships. Five different companies have knighted Finger Motion as a, as a company that is real and doing business. That's the difference. So you learned about, I taught you about small companies with big partnerships, very hard to get. NVIDIA, BMR, partnership, just like I described here. We learned about the forward split. All right, we all see how that works, right? We know the shorts trapped here. They did a forward split, and now you can see how it trades, what's going on here. You got that done. Then we saw an IPO. One guy owned the whole float. I told that to the reporter today. The whole float the guy owns. And it happened Thursday. If you want proof, it's right there. Just go get someone to investigate it, and you got it right there. So that's three lessons you learned in two days. Forget all the tricks about making short selling, spoofing, washing, moving trades. We learned about Alpine and their and their criminal activities from Richard, not legal advice, telling us every day. I think ZJYL go. I've been hearing GDC is going to go. All right, so that's. That's another little trick. We fought on Wall Street. You try to get ahead of the curve. What's next? What's next? What's going to go next? I like to follow things that haven't moved yet. I do not believe in chasing because if you chase BMR and you paid 25 for it and you didn't sell it, you're down nine points on it now, right? Or $20, you're down five. Or if you paid 18, you're down whatever. I like to get into things before they move. I don't believe in chasing stock. I may miss out on a lot, a lot of great trades, but I don't like to get, you get wiped out when you do, and you're wrong. So that's why I don't do that. The moment you arrive in ER, though, I don't know what that is. Sorry, right, it's mine. It's an advertisement. Um, you're in Key Largo, huh, William? You sure you're playing on the right side of the fence there, my friend? I don't know where Key Largo is. Um, it's a movie. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of fun down there, a lot of partying in Key Largo. Yeah, what's happening? Anything else? I've um, rambled on for a little bit. Oh God. Nothing. Ham no said Ham said whales held at three hundred. 
and didn't sell. Why would they sell at eight? Ham, this is proportionally dishonest, purposely disregarding the split adjusted numbers. You should be ashamed of yourself. Well, Colin, I, I think you're an that. idiot. You're a complete idiot. I mean, I said it. The, the numbers don't add up, dummy. And it's dishonest. I don't even own it. Well, I'm giving you my opinion. What do you want me to say? Ma'am, please correct I, your statement and apologize. Colin, you know what? I think you've earned a complete What's my statement? William, William, listen, number one, I told you before I don't own it. I told you they were doing No, he, you said whales held at 300 and didn't. Them. Why would they sell at eight? This idiot, this idiot can't do the arithmetic in his head that 300 is 15. So the whales didn't sell at 15. Why would they sell at eight? Because Colin Frogstone is an idiot. Well, again, the 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 whales, the volume, when it was 300, they weren't selling. She wasn't even trading. There it was 8,000 shares, 5,000 shares. Go back and look. You tell me these people did this playing this game, squeezing these shorts to sell five thousand shares. Meanwhile, I've had many people on here that said that they bought ten or twenty shares and sold half of them and have them for free. So, Colin, so that's the world of trading. I said before I do not own it, and I don't speak Chinese. I like egg rolls and wonton soup though, and fried rice. So maybe that's my connection here. I don't know. So listen, William, listen, he's a buffoon. You can't do anything about it. I'm a yeah, chill, a complete, uh, whatever. There he's you a go. complete idiot. Um, uh, you know, and I apologize to Colin, but my statement is true. And uh, you can say what you Colin's like. Colin's a I can functional say what I like idiot. Too. Listen, you can say what you like. Again, this is not my advice to him. I don't have his number. If he likes his number, give me his number, I'll call him up. And I'll basically give him my thoughts every day. Of course, he's going to have to pay me for it, but I'll call him up every day. Why is he calling in on your call to uh, what's his what's his fight with you for? Because what it's it's a te it not what does he want it to go down? Sound to me what it sounds you? like they're feeling pressure from you on this ZJYL and GDC I, yeah, and listen, I'm MMTLP I'm and H E L O and H A L O and T E L O. This one and that one and that one and this one and that one. I told you these. These little creatures make a living from shorting these stocks. You, the big boys are big boys, but there's all these cre creatures, Timothy Sykes, that sell. They work at day trading firms, and they just follow the big boys and pile on. And they sell 10,000 shares from these little trading spots that don't have a borrow. They can make it short using the market maker exemption like Webbush does. They do it from all over the world. They sell into the markets, they drive the stocks down, and they steal 50 cents, a dollar. Every once in a while, they break a stock, and it goes down 2 or $3, like they did in Finger Motion through Capybara. All right? And the big short seller that my friends met in uh, ZJYL, he said he knows Capybara. He knows about, he knows Andrew Left, Capybara, Hindenburg, he knows the ball. I'm sure he does. So... You know what? One day we'll get to the bottom of what they do. And my, you know, my friends uh, seem to have met this guy, and uh, he's sort of given him information. So we'll figure that out down the road. All right. Um, that doesn't seem like there's any significant questions left. And I told you about finger motion. It was seventeen thousand to buy, and it was a hundred shares. Now there's a thousand shares, and they traded it at 219 so there's the wash trade at 219 they want us all to see it it's traded at 219 that we're all going to panic now the 100 shares that trades there or the wash trade whatever they're crossing and gtii still to 212,000. where 50 60 percent of the trades went off in one trade today the wash trade I'm just trying to recap how stocks don't trade like this. This is all make believe what you're saying. I know the numbers hurt. I got it, but this is not this is not my. I have not nothing to do with all these trades. I'm just reporting what we were taught, and this is what you're watching is is complete false manipulation, spoofing, washing, you name it. Every trick in the book to try to drive a stock lower. That's what you're watching. So, do you think T Low will hit another 
low, T low. That somebody has put it. She's put in a bid at five, and it hasn't gone off today. I'm not sure it's going to go back down, but it's a good idea. It's a good trade. Yeah. Well, you you know you watch it. You know, I personally think if you know anything about the IPO market, companies go public. And there's a quiet period for one a couple of days, and all of a sudden, good news starts coming out to tell us about why they went public. They're going to have to tell us something. Well, and they also so, used to, I don't know, I assume they still do it, they build in a green shoe. So if the stock goes down, they, they're supposed to maintain a reasonably strong market after, after the offering. Otherwise, they haven't done their job. Anyway, they used the green shoe to have money to buy it back. My, I'll give you my two cents on it. Okay, this is my opinion. It's not legal advice, as Richard would say. I think the bottom on the stock is seven. The the attack that you saw down to five with your opportunity, yeah. that's over with. Yeah, it, it, this will this will reset. I think the bottom is going to be seven. I think the company is going to come out with news and tell us what they're doing, and we'll get to see what they're doing to extend our life. I, Again, I was this was brought to my attention over the concern of the metal in your blood from the COVID shot. And other, I knew nothing about this company and I told William about it. And did. I said, my friend said this thing's going public next week. That was it. I have nothing to do with it. And I couldn't believe it when he called me up and said, this stock, you see it? I'm like, what are you talking about? And they attacked it straight down. And the I other thing it. is when they bring an IPO, the Stock is usually placed with hot hands all over the institutional world. Right. There is and no if it breaks the if it breaks the bid or the offer price, a lot of them just flip out. They just get out and get me out. There is no flippers. They call them flippers, people. Yeah. Like flipper, the TV show, flipper. There's no yeah. flipping. People buy it. They don't like it. They just want to get the, they pay the broker commission. And they just get they out. It's a hot deal and they just flip it. And that's all they care they about. They just the and sell time. immediately. The minute, the minute you tell them, all right, you got 5,000 shares, they've sold it at another firm. And then but they, they, they ask for no, DVP. That is a normal IPO. This is an abnormal IPO. Right. One guy bought the whole thing. He bought the whole thing. It's right there. The one person bought the whole thing. And here it is. They knocked it down. I think they just come into it and try to create a float. So the oh, float was God. 1 million. Now the float could be 1.3 million, right? Yeah. So they artificially created a float. And now this company is supposed to have 1 million shares. Now has 1.3 million. I don't think the company's looking for trading volume. They don't need everybody to buy the stock. They need to have news, and it'll news will bring in buyers into it. And the guy who purchased it at seven, the guy who bought the one million shares of stock, paid seven. And the only reason I even looked at it when they crashed it, it says, "Well, if he paid seven, how can I not pay five dollars and twenty-five cents for the five dollars and thirty cents, whatever it was? How can I not take a shot then? This guy paid seven. So that's how you got to look at this. This is Wall Street gives you an opportunity to take advantage of the, the the morons, the short sellers that do this every once in a while, and that's what I see. I see that in finger motion right now, based on fundamentals. I think finger motion's been under attack, and I think these guys have stayed too long, and they have a real serious problem because they know once they start buying it, trying to cover, they'll turn the stock and drive and kill themselves anyway. So that's that's why you don't see the covering. And that's why I say it's 205 million. If you were short, anyone on this phone, 205 million shares, make it 5 million shares. Forget 205 million. All right, I'm making a good statement for all the people that doubt me. If you were short 5 million shares of finger motion, would you wait to cover or start to cover now, William? What would you do? Oh, I do. I try to get every single dollar out. All right. Wait till it goes time. to five. <laughs> no. Right. Well, again, I would have already been out of it. I would have been. I'm just saying that if you're short and you sold it at seven, when you start tiptoeing here, I would buy it. I would buy it back if I sold it to seven. I would take it back to four, not two. I would take it back to four to make sure I covered the same. I made three dollars on it on five million shares. I made fifteen dollars. 
and screw these shareholders I covered. But they don't even do that. They don't cover anything. And there's your sign how they don't cover. This is not a company that's going to zero. The company's standing right here telling you exactly who their partners and what they're doing. You make the decision if you feel that it's out of whack and you make your own decisions on it. But when I covered institutions and they get in and a stock would drop like that, like the video, these guys buy the dips. They can buy the dips. We can't buy the dips because we're all collectively, we're poor bastards. We don't have the money to do that. And you have to get over it because you can't support every share that you buy and everything. You just can't go all in all the time. You have to tiptoe in, buy positions, and you sit and you wait. That's what we do. Most people don't even like to wait. I want to buy 5,000 shares, buy me 5,000 and I'm in. I learned my lesson doing that and I tiptoe into things now. And I still tiptoe and I get upside down. It happens to everybody. You can't just get, you just can't buy every share and say, oh, I'm done buying. Can you take it up now for me? Can you guys take it up for me? That's not how it works. That's it, William. We're good. Yeah, I'd say, can ZJYL hit fifteen hundred? Fifteen hundred. What price would that be? I don't even know. What That's that thirty is. grand pre pre. Uh, thirty thousand. Yeah, thirty thousand pre uh, split. No, what is it? Fifteen hundred. Could it hit fifteen hundred now? I, it, I, it would I be going. I heard it's going up that way. I don't know. But listen, you get out when you have to. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I think Michelle, it's not going to drop back to five. That was artificial selling. They already did it once. They lost. T E L O. Yeah, T E L O. I wouldn't wait for five again. I listen. You, this is the way to do it. Is it Michelle? Yeah, Michelle. Michelle, listen. You're you're getting a learning experience here. All right. The way to do it is to you buy one share, and this way you can actually see how it works, because. What you're seeing today, if they don't fix this game, it's going to happen again. And you could sit there and say, you know what? I remember two years ago, this idiot tell me about this thing, and I could see what happens. And the next time I see an IPO come out and it gets squashed like that, I'm going to buy the dip and wait for it to get back to the IPO price and I can make a quick dollar. You got a lesson. You got a free lesson on this. And this is something you wouldn't learn in Harvard because they would never even understand it. But being on a trading desk, I've seen this. I've seen this motion picture before, and I've seen it in big names, big IPOs. All right, they come back, they support it, they sell off because people are oh, they, oh this IPO stinks. It traded down. That's what. That's how Wall Street looks at it. A company comes public at twenty, it goes to eighteen. Oh, it's a bad IPO. No, it isn't. It's because the people that bought the stock, it's in weak hands. They're just flipping it. And a lot of times they turn and it goes back to the price of 20, which was the IPO price. That's what I'm seeing here. Now, I think that what happens after this, I think the company comes out with news to tell the world about their IPO. That's the next leg of an IPO. So I would look for that news. But, you know, owning one share, you don't have to risk it. You miss. We call that, Michelle, we call that, that was the easy money trade. All right, that was the easy money. You got, we had a chance. If you were quick enough, you had the easy money trade. Now I think people are catching wind of what's going here. And, you know, I'm sure the guy who bought the million shares is not that stupid, him and his friends. If he had seven million to dump on the whole thing, I'm sure he had some friends that had money and they're going to start scooping up. That was another, that was another reason that I looked at it. So I guess they'll turn this thing around and you can see that it's starting to get stronger. And once it goes through seven, who knows where it goes? I don't know. But again, it has something that I was interested in. Life, expanding your life, a healthy life. Who in their right mind would want to kill a company that says that statement? Are they a fraud? Who would come out and make statements that we're trying to work on the cure for cancer? Anyone who says that, I have to believe that they're in their heart. They're trying to make it work. Does it work? No. But what, you're going to fault them for trying? I don't know how to cure it. Infectious disease is CELU. -E That's his job. Do I believe in him? Yes. 
Does he want to cure diseases? Yes, the guy's a neurosurgeon. But what, did, what happened to him? Wall Street bent him over, and as they said, they did him dry. They raped him, and he doesn't know what to do. That's, that's the difference. Each stock has a different, a different flavor, a different trade. You know, ZJYL is something that is crazy. I got it. The only way I would play would be buying the dips. When it runs up, I would sell it. If it pulls back, I would buy it, and I keep getting a lower price on it. And maybe I wake up one day in the morning, and it's up 10 points. That's how I play that. That's how I would play that thing. But I don't have the financial means to play all these stocks. I just don't have it. But that's how I would trade it. Finger motion is a different story. GTI is a completely different story. Now the GT, the finger motion, the uh, the, the little the, the little uh, spat at a dollar twenty has disappeared. <laughs> the nineteen bid went to a dollar twenty now, and the sellers there's no there's no selling in the stock. I, was I believe wrong. these guys are trying to cover. She's saying it's five dollars now. No, I don't, I don't see it. T L. The ELO isn't five. No, that's it's on your phone. It's a different price. That's it. It says five dollars from the other day. You have to download it, re-download it again. Yeah, Take it, delete so it, and put it back on your phone. Whatever system you're using, mm -hmm. it's six seventy six to six ninety nine on thirty one thousand shares. Yeah. All right. So I don't see any more. Did I answer as many questions as possible? Is finger ready to rock it? Yes. That's my opinion. Yeah. Who do you think will win the Super Bowl? No, I'm taking. I'm gonna. I'm gonna bet all I can on the 49ers. I love Ace in his hat. I'm putting my money on the 49ers. So let me know how I do. <laughs> <laughs> that poor bastard. <laughs> hey, hey, stop crying. My team won 13 games and I lost all my money. Take a walk. <laughs> crying is the next window <laughs> crying is for presidents have, of Mexico I have to tell you this I, I told Dirty Mayo this story last night I was I used to bet hockey games I was a big Ranger fan and I used to always go to the Ranger games I was betting hockey games and uh, I was betting 500 a game and I was up to 3,000 and I bet it all on a hockey game and I lost the game because of an open that goal the guy shot the puck and he i think he tied the game at the whatever it was the game went to a tie i can't remember but i lost because the puck passed the line just as the buzzer went off and they went to a review puck was over the line just by a little bit and mm -hmm. i lost the bet because of that and i lost and that was the end of my I never bet at hockey again and laughing at me <laughs> well, and that's uh ace got his little torture so everyone gets tortured in sports betting that's how it goes in the stock market you learn by your past mistakes i'm giving you lessons of, that i've learned over the years write them down think about it think about what think about what i'm saying i'm not always right but these are things that you know i've made these mistakes i've seen them ipo trading is a very different beast and by accident, I was able to find something that was told to me. And, you know, I didn't, I had nothing to do with the IPO. I still don't even know the name of the firm that did it. But again, I think it's got to go back to the IPO price. And then you'll start seeing news from the public company. And we see where it goes from there. That's how I look at it. And it always happens that way. Go look at any IPO. Go look at, so go hit up IPO and see when they go public and when the company starts making noise. They don't make noise the first minute of trade. Then we got all this great news. They don't say that. They'll let a couple of days go by and then the news starts to come out. I'm sure they were rushing to go public for a reason. They have something going on, right? I don't know, just make it make sense to me, right? Mm -hmm. Hurry up, let's go public. Why? We have nothing going on. Let's just go public so we can be tortured every day. Or do you think we're getting close? To whatever they're trying to do. Something must be going on. Is that it, William? Yeah, it's it's it. All right, so they hit the uh 
finger motion, the bid at 220 for 15,000. Now there's 15,000 at 219. So we're showing no offers and yet the trades are going off. That my friends is the, the washing machine going on here. All right, so you're seeing washing trades at this 219, 220 area. Why are they watching it? To create volume, to create the panic that people are selling, to move trades around. Maybe they're moving offshore from Germany to Bolivia. Who the hell knows what they're doing over there? But those trades are fake. There's not even a question about that. Hurry up, William. I'm going to go bid 120 to 15,400. And in one second, someone tells me 15,400. No one thinks that's strange. Go try to find a buyer and seller in any stock that you're involved in. Go make some phone calls. Tell me how you do. I did that. You know how hard it is to find a buyer and seller? Not easy. Hey, I got a buyer. I got a seller in this stock. Do you care? I don't trade the name. I have a buyer in this stock. Do you care? I don't trade the name. I don't. I never own the stock. Da, da, da. You can keep dialing for days. It's a golden goose when you can find the buyer and the seller. You get paid on both sides of the trade. You get paid by the buyer and you get paid by the seller. So as a broker, you loved it. Go find it, though. That's another thing. And you got to move quick. But these guys always seem to have the buyer and seller like this. I got a buyer. I got a seller right here. How much you got? 15.4? That's exactly what I have for sale, 15.4. Is that it, William? We're going to go yeah, outside. Well, I mean, there's some questions I don't really want to ask. All right, you. so let's, um, let's end it on that. Does GTO, just GTII go out of business and we're all screwed? GTI goes out of business. I have no idea. I just think that MMTLP and I think the company, listen, the one thing good about the company has no burn rate. Local had a burn rate of two hundred thousand a month, three hundred thousand a month. That's what that's what kills companies. You want you want to make things happen? Go open up a business and burn your capital. See how fast you go out of business. Does, does why do? And there you go, finger motion. They hit the bid, and now it's they knocked out that bid, William. Now it's offered at uh, you know two eighteen. Why do finger buy, and GTII trade in unison? When I Lynn know, shorted I one and Kramer shorted the other. They don't know each other. They have nothing to do with each other. They always trade together. I. That's why I said when finger motion goes, what's it going to drag up? What did I say, William? I don't know. I'm tired of listening to the same crap over. I'm, I'm like I said their, that when finger motion I'm like goes, their family. I'm tired of hearing the same story over and over. And that's over. what I'm just trying to... I said when finger motion goes, because if finger motion has very different fundamentals than GTII, that when finger motion goes, that it'll drag up GTII. I said that a zillion times, a zillion times. Make it a zillion and one. When you get to heaven, St. Um, Peter's going to go, we've heard it already. <laughs> I'm like an insurance salesman. No one wants to listen to me. <laughs> let him in. Let him in. I don't want to hear his pitch. <laughs> anyway, all right, everyone. Have a great day. There's not much more I can say. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you. Happy, happy Fat Tuesday. Thank you very much. Have a great we'll day. Talk to you during Lent. All right. Bye. All right. Bye bye. All right, guys. I'm going to end this now because I just. I don't face finger halted. I don't see that. I see a bid and an ask. I see skies of blue, red rivers too. Mm -hmm. Singing, I love you. Um, I know ham's the best. Ham's the best. All right. Yeah, ham. I'm telling Joe, I agree with you. 
you can learn a lot. It's it's amazing. I wish I had had a, somebody teaching me. I probably own the I probably own the Mets right now. That's pretty cool. All right, everyone. I'm gonna. Uh, Lucky's good right now. He's asleep. We went on a walk last night. He's he's just. He's just losing his um, mobility, but he's all right. He, he makes people happy. Everyone loves him. Well, not everyone, but most people just fall in love with him, and he's very gentle and food-motivated. Um, I miss Moose. I never met, met Moose. But with a name like Moose, who wouldn't want to say hi to Moose? Give him a big hug if he lets you. Dogs don't let you. Dogs generally don't let you hug them. Oh, in a coma. Oh. I'll, I'll, I'll. Um, I didn't have the call with him yet, um, but we cha exchanged emails. I, I might have been a little bit strong in my explanation, but I didn't go up to New York this morning. I had an interview, as you know, and uh, the interview that he had was closed, so I didn't even try to go up. But I'll, I'll be up to see him. And yes, CAUD is fighting back, and I, I have high hopes. And they actually have both technology acquisitions and a strategy that can blow the lid off the ad tech, martech space. And I think you could see CAUD fifteen, twenty, twenty-five dollars. I'm not saying immediately, but could be, could be. Um, cheers till next time. Uh, Sorry about your little dog. And uh, uh, Mr. Sicko. All right. Well, do, try to remind me again if I forget, but I'll try to look him up, Mr. Sicko. Um, all right. I, I don't know why, but I'm just, I'm just feeling completely, uh, like I'm gonna, uh, you know, that I, like I could slip into my own, uh, coma. So I, I just, I have to end it. I can't, I don't have the, um, uh, staying power to keep going. So I'm, I wish everyone peace, love, and happiness. I'm, you know, one of these trade stocks is going to do it at some point. I'm sorry that doesn't. We don't have the exact way to predict it. It's the happy Chinese New Year. Tomorrow is the beginning of Lent. It's Ash Wednesday. So even if you don't go to, um, you know, church, uh, uh, at least let's maybe make it our effort over these next Lenten days to pray for peace. So, all right, we'll count, we'll, um, we will catch you guys uh, later. And um, uh, I'm sure I'll be on tomorrow. And in the meantime, um, you were here for Ash Wednesday last year. I didn't, I couldn't remember if I did it. I'm going to try to go this year. I'm going to try to make an extra effort during Lent this year. We'll see. We'll see. All right. So we'll we'll catch you um, as we begin the Lenten season. Well, yeah, I think ARCA is great. And I think 
the reason technical analysis works almost always now, I believe the algorithms use it, the computers use it, the criminals use it. So. And the weird thing about ashes on your forehead, I remember um, uh, something that Jesus says about how the, the Sadducees or somebody, they will get their, you know, they do all their prayers and out in the open and they do their charity in the open and they try to get credit for everything they're doing. And he said, uh, do your prayers privately, do your charity anom anonymously because they've already gotten their reward. They've gotten their reward by showing off in, in this world. Um, so anyway, it's always kind of weird that you have to wear that ash. It seems kind of like uh, contradictory to that, that, uh, message. On the other hand, I think what it's meant to do is remind each of us basically that we're going to die, that this world is but a, as my dad told me, it's but an anteroom. And uh, uh, um, anyway. Let me just answer this text. Um, in my gut, when do I think ZJYL will pop? After we've sold out. But I think it's, um, I think it, it looks like to me that, look, the, the trading instincts that I used to have don't work anymore. Everything's rigged, but it looks like it's going to be pretty soon. It's only Tuesday. I was told on Friday or Thursday that it would take several days for Morgan Stanley to sort the, the shares. So I, I would guess buy-ins could come at any time. So, but look, if you're watching it each day, um, I know it can be frustrating. I would love it to go. I would love it just to run. Uh, but I look at it each day. I have GTCs out there to sell very high. But I don't ex each day. I don't expect it to move. I'm perfectly willing to wait another two weeks, four weeks. Um, after after that, though, after a few weeks, I'll probably kind of lose interest, depending on what ha what's happening. But if you think it should have already moved, um, I think you're asking a lot of the marketplace. They just issued the the twenty for one uh, distribution, and it's still rocketing around the back offices of all these brokerage firms. They're still digesting it. We're counting on a buy-in. That buy-in hasn't happened yet. Uh, the whales aren't selling, even though that idiot was trying to confuse anybody. The whales didn't sell at fifteen. They're not selling at eight. Uh, they might be buying more. It's the same old story, KP Singh. It's just the same story. I don't think it's even begun to have a squeeze. I don't, none of this is very impressive from the short side. The shorts are trying everything they can do. Not, it's a very puny plan as far as I can tell what they're doing right now in ZJYL. So I think the major move hasn't even begun. There's been very little major move to the downside. They tried, they're testing it, trying to see if there's stop loss orders. 
It's trying to see if they can make people sell, trying to get out. I'm telling you, what we do with this stock does not matter. We don't own enough. It's just a battle with those whales. And I've you've been told the whales game plan. The whales aren't selling. So you either have patience or you lose patience and get out. But you're going to have to see 10 million shares in volume one way or the other before you even get a hint that you need to make another decision. The only way I would sell ZJYL if it is if all of a sudden there was an even better story out there, and I don't know a better story right now than ZJYL for the chance of an immediate uh, pop in the price to make a short-term profit. So t -Low is hitting a new high. I don't know what I'm going to do um, about going outside. I'm going to try, I think I'm going to try to take, I'm, my head is, I, I don't know, that I'm, I'm actually a little worried about my, uh, I hope, I had a physical, so I hope my health is all right. Um, and, and that's something. I can't believe a year's gone by. I just can't believe it. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to do better this ash. Uh, sorry, this Lenten season. I just don't get TA so short. Say, let's do a head and shoulders before. We cover. No, no. Technical analysis is was originally designed to try to use, I mean, in general, whether it's in nature or in herds or in people, masses of people, you can study behaviors. And the, as simple as it is, technical analysis is trying to determine when people are likely to sell, when they're likely to buy. And uh, uh, you get some signals that show a give up in selling, that selling is tired. And then you can expect a snapback rally. But in these corrupt Gary Gensler markets, the selling never stops, ever, never stops. Why? Because they just take out the Xerox machine was something that you could you could uh, take a document and you could make a copy of it. They just Xerox the certificates over and over. It's like a mimeograph machine. Shung, 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 shung. They have a master and they just shung, 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 shung. They keep selling. So technical analysis is almost meaningless, except that all of the algorithms on the buy side and on the sell side all of the computers now use it as if it's a real science. It's a bullshit science. It used to be if you had a technical indicator, you wouldn't tell anybody really about it. There's some broad ones. It's like going to the casino and they'll they'll actually sell you some of the rules for blackjack. They want you to get at the table so you think you know what you're doing and you lose money. Some of the technical indicators they get you focused on, head and shoulders. But in this game of stripping you from your capital, of destroying the market caps of companies, they're, they're indifferent to those technical indicators. But in the short day trading algorithms and all that genius crap that we somehow need in this country, instead of educating our children, Instead of having, finding new medical breakthroughs, instead of building our infrastructure, instead of having clean food and clean water, we have all these geniuses trading money back and forth, stealing. But hey, that's what we want. That's the world we want. All right, CB, thank you. Mark's predicting a run by Thursday or Friday. Let me think that through. That's very likely. Um, I think the key is when the
the back offices, if such a thing even exists anymore, start asking for uh, that the shorts were already in trouble. It was rumored. I mean, everyone, you got to just keep hearing it over and over again. The shorts were in trouble at $20-25. Pre-split, pre-split, pre-split. It's like basically a dollar. They were in trouble. So what you hope, what you hope is um they start buying in. If it doesn't, then what? It'll drift, Ramon. They, if there's not a run, it will drift. It will drift downward. It might slowly drift, drift upward. It will drift. If you don't like it, um, I would say I would say the surest trade out there is logic. Uh, I, because I think there'll be news and logic. It's three cents. Maybe it goes to five cents or 10 cents or 15 cents or 25 or 30. Just get out. Whatever it goes up, just get out. So you double your money, you triple your money. Then go to, if it's still down, go to HNRC. And if you can buy that, I think you'll get a cash dividend. And once you're paid that, maybe you can sell because the other dividend will be coming. Maybe the stock will be up. I think CAUD has an excellent chance of running. I'm also starting to see activity in RCRT. And I wonder if that's going to, and, and GoLogic, but I'm not telling you to go there yet. I'm just looking at it. Uh, uh, this TLO is an interesting trade. I happen to agree with him. They're going to try. It'll run up, I think. But I'm not saying it'll go to 14. Maybe it goes to nine or eight. Then you get out. You know, if you want action every day, you've got to learn to just trade some of the trends. If ZJYL does not move this week, it will drift. There is a massive short position in ZJYL. There are... There are a handful of guys that own the entire float. They own the entire float. They're not selling. The insiders own 80 or 85% of the stock. They're not selling. Who's selling are the criminals, the, the day traders. They're annoying you. They sell it down. They sell counterfeit shares. They sell it to themselves. They move it around. They spoof it. That's going to continue. If the stock doesn't go up, that kind of activity is going to continue. They're going to drive it down, Ramon, until you can't stand it anymore and you just sell your stock. If you can't live with that, just get the hell out. It's a dollar. It's a dollar. I don't know what it's trading for. It, actually, it's back to 841. So that's a time if you if you multiply that by 20, that's about $170 uh, or maybe a little more. Call it $160 pre-split. It was as high as 300. In my judgment, now's not the time to sell because it's already down from 300. Now would be the time to buy it for a trade. But if it's annoying you, it's actually up from the 74 where I first got in. Well, it wasn't my first trade. Sorry. It was my last trade. But it traded back to 74. The stock moved from around 7 all the way to 550. If you don't like the trading, if you don't like the volatility, and if you think it needs to move by the end of the week or it's a busted trade, I would suggest just getting out of it. You're, you're not made for this trade. This trade, I believe, is a pre-split numbers, pre-split numbers.
the float, 1.3 million. The whale zone, 1.3 million. The whales asked for 500,000 shares delivered to them to squeeze it. IBKR saying we can't do it. There is manipulation in it. Pre-split. Pre-split, the rumor. Ten million shares short. Underwater from twenty to twenty-five dollars. None of that's changed, Ramon. None of that has changed. The company did a 20 for one forward split. The system is still absorbing the ramifications from that. But, but, is it possible the stock can go back down? Absolutely. Every stock can go down. Every stock can be shorted. Every stock can be crushed. Every stock can be destroyed. But if you're worried, Ramon, you're worried because in these other stocks, the powerful shorts could outsmart retail, outsmart the longs by just selling, 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 selling. In this case, it doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter if you buy or sell. It has no impact. None. I'm sorry to say. Why? Now, if those numbers were correct, I don't know what to call it. If those numbers are correct, a dollar is their squeeze point. That's where they got in trouble. There's 200 million shares short if those numbers are correct. There's no way to prove them. It's all rumor. And the previous high was over $25 and recently $300 or 15. If it breaks through these numbers, that's when you try to sell. When it's down here at seven or eight, I'm not telling you to buy, but in a in a ideal world world, if you're building a position in your trading, that's where you buy it. Could it go back down? Yes, but but the buyers Can't do the arithmetic. Um, I think this is right. The whales now own 21 million shares. They're not selling. Whatever the shorts do down here, the whales aren't selling. The whale, whales don't worry every day. Hey, did it, it did it go today? What happens if it doesn't go by Thursday? What's going to happen then? They don't worry. They made their bet. They're willing to wait for the squeeze. That happens to be the float. So, Ramon, the, the play hasn't happened. If it doesn't happen by Thursday or Friday, it's all still the same story. The only difference is you're impatient, which is all right, by the way. You can be impatient. You can say, you know what? 
I gave it, I gave this st uh, story two weeks. I gave it three weeks. I don't like it. I'm getting out. That's perfectly fine. Absolutely fine. And it's a rational decision. But the, the two don't, don't have any question. If it doesn't move by Thursday or Friday, doesn't mean anything. Anything. Just doesn't mean anything. The same setup exists. I'm showing my frustration. It, I just, I, I don't know what to say. You don't know when it's going to run. It may never run. Maybe the criminals can outsmart the whales. It's entirely possible. Maybe the criminals, if it's true, have the rumored 200 million short. Maybe they can take that to a billion short. Who the hell knows? But right now, the what right now, the story is recently out of uh, Southeast Asia, whales took a position equivalent to the entire float. The rest of the stock, the preponderance, 80, 85 percent, is held by insiders. Nobody's selling. All the sales are fraudulent, if you believe it. What the heck does ha whether or not it moves by Thursday have to do with that story? It doesn't change. But my answer to you, if it doesn't move by Thursday or Friday, they'll keep trying. It'll go up a bit. They'll try to keep bringing it down. And it'll be torture. What else to say? I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I got to get a new computer set up. <laughs> Everybody sent, I, I hear, a lot of money to keep Don Fizz here in town. And uh, I I should do one of those campaigns to get a computer, but I'm not I'm not asking. I just I'd love to get a new computer. Hopefully, one of these trades. Uh, you know, I've told you I own uh, I own 340 plus 15. I own 355, I think, shares of ZJYO. I I think it has a shot of going to. You know, th two, three, four thousand in a spike, in a spike. But it, who knows? I mean, it might be all dream numbers. I'd love it if it went to a hundred. But um, uh, I didn't buy it to worry that it's not going to trade by Thursday. I didn't buy it. I could have sold at three hundred or two eighty, and 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 bought. Well, let's use the post split numbers. I could have sold at 14 or 15 and bought back. I didn't do that. Why didn't I do that? Because I wasn't sure I, I I could put open orders in. I wasn't sure I could buy it back. That's how that's how I feel that if it runs, it's going to come out of the blue. Am I stupid? Yeah, I'm stupid. I could have I could have traded back and forth, owned my shares for free, and and uh, you know whatever that cost was to build my position 1500 or eight or two grand it's not very much money compared to what you guys do but i didn't do any of that i think uh, It's like trying to get a girl to go on a date with you. You call her, but nobody calls anymore. You text her, and maybe you text her one more time. You don't hear from her. She hasn't said yes. She hasn't said no. But you decide out of your own tension, if she doesn't call me back by Thursday, it's over. I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. I'm not going to take her call. I'm not going to take her texts. And I'm going to go 
to go out with somebody else. Well, she sa hasn't said yes or no yet. You don't know. She might have been hit by a car. She might be traveling with her ailing grandmother. She might be in exams. She might be, you don't know. But you're deciding, because she hasn't returned your text, that she not worth it, not worth waiting for the upside or the disappointment of a no. Yeah, it's okay. It's rational. But nothing's changed. The market hasn't told you what's going to happen with ZJYL yet. I'll tell you what. Look for 10 million uh, volume of 10 million shares in one day, whether it's up or down. And that'll tell you where the stock's going. 10 million. I'd go with 10 million as your first indication. Until then, it's just all, it's all just worthless back. It's just waves going back and forth on a sand. You're looking for a, a, a tsunami or a, or a, I don't know, the earth to open and all the water to drain out. I don't know. I don't, I can't make that analogy work. I don't know what this is. I'll just read it. It makes no sense to me. Intuitive, intuitive machine, N-U-N-R, Feb 14th, Falcon 9, SpaceX, rocket launcher, rocket ship, multiple stars, smile, okay, go, boom, boom, boom. No idea, but there, you got your, you got your uh, attention. I, I, I don't know anything about AULT. If they're buying back all that stock, it doesn't mean they're going to do it now. They could stretch it out. To me, that's a gimmick to get to say, hey, we're buying back stock and the short C right through it. Let me look up the AULT. $0.54. Cents. Uh, it's been as high as... $731 and as low as 35. So they already diluted the hell out of their stock. And now they're going to do a band-aid, a, a, you know, a, an attempt to resolve the mistakes they've already made. I don't know anything about AULUT. My guess is it'll be back down to 35 cents after an initial flutter upward. That's my guess. Where are they getting the cash? They needed to, to do this disastrous uh, uh, reverse split, and now they're buying stock? Where are they getting the cash from? I don't know. Mark, I'll look it up. I'm highly skeptical. The yearly high is 700, and you think it's a buy at 55 cents? I don't know. It's not even over a dollar. They did a reverse split. It's not even over a dollar. I guess it was as high as a dollar today, maybe. So maybe they'll get it to a dollar. I, I don't know, Mark. I'll try to I'll try to find out more about it. It's undervalued. Two million market cap, 90 million enterprise value. Yeah, I can show you. I can show you stock after stock. Anyway, I'll I'll look at it. It it may be it may be uh, a perfect stock to look look after. Mark, why do you think seventy two million is good? They just churn it back and forth. They won't let it go up. Sorry to be negative. I'm sorry to be negative. I gotta look up to look at it. Wow. I love that, Mark. Snowboarding? That sounds fun. I don't snowboard, but I I used to ski. 50 inches of fresh powder. That's awesome. In California, that would be awesome. That's great news. 
All right, we'll see if it's going to work after my um, hours. William Lucy, I can tell you that story on a stock I worked on for three and a half years. I was supposed to get as my payout, I was supposed to get 400,000 shares, a medical company. No, educate. No, it was a medical company, medical company. And of course, my, the, my associate, uh, you know, impatient, lost interest, never believed it. We were offered uh, 160,000 shares after all these the years of work, raising a lot of money. He said, all right, we'll accept it. I had no choice. So I got, I got my 160,000 shares. The company was listed, research, uh, uh, trade in the, on the over-the-counter market, trade in whatever. I, right now, I can't remember the name of the London uh, AIM, maybe. And uh, I, maybe it, maybe they have another exchange, but I think it was same. Research, revenues growing, approvals, uh, FDA approvals, constant improvement in the story. And and it kept getting diluted. They kept selling it down, and the company each time it got approval, it needed more money, and the same people raised money. My 160,000 shares, and and it was sent to me finally. I, I couldn't leave it in uh, the brokerage account. I guess I had it in in physical form sent to me. It's eight shares, and it's probably less now. It's probably four now. Eight shares. Eight shares. And the stock price is, when I got the shares, I think the stock price was either a dollar fifty a pound, fifty or three three pounds. I re remember vividly getting a phone call for my shares that would have given me eighty, maybe a hundred thousand pounds, and I was a jerk. I didn't take it because I figured if someone's calling me out of the blue, it's going up. Well now. The company's doing better. The company has revenues, CEOs. It's performing. I have eight shares trading at, last time I looked, it was either three or four dollars each. Call it four. I have $32 worth of stock. That's what they do. That's what they do. Where are they getting the money? Oh God, I've got to spend time on AULT. Alt Alliance. Twenty-eight million uh, share a uh, dollar market cap. Sorry, twenty-eight million market cap. Seventy thousand shares outstanding. Floats not available. Total revenue. Uh, 134,000 cost of revenue, 78,000 gross profit, 55,000. That's nice. They have a gross profit. That's very good. Uh, operating income though is negative 140,000. So they don't have, uh, operating income. Um, uh, Earnings per share, negative 74 cents. It's 
They have current assets of 200,000 and total assets of half a million. Current liabilities of 200,000, total liabilities of 350,000, net tangible assets, $150,000. So I do wonder out of their current assets, they have cash and cash equivalents of $130,000. So they have cash equivalent of 130,000. They have net receivables of 30,000. So if you're generous, they have 150,000. They have a gross profit, but they're they're losing money. One's a non-recurring item though, so maybe it's not as bleak as it looks, but in essence, I don't want. I don't know where they're going to get money to buy 50 million shares. The stock trades at 60 cents. Let's assume it goes up. Let's they let's say if they start buying, it's going to go up. They buy 50 million shares at a dollar. It's 50 million dollars. Where are they going to get that? Where are they going to get that money? It's a gimmick, I think. But anyway, that's my reaction. And I also, phew, I also wonder, it doesn't state it here, if the numbers I read to you need three zeros on the end, but it, it didn't say they do. It's a gimmick. I think it's a gimmick. I'll look at it. I mean, that's my that's my skeptical first read. I'll try to look at AULT in more detail. But that's my read on it. And Mark Mark's a good analyst, by the way. So go ahead. Go ahead and uh, um, uh, try it. But I don't know about that. Why would the criminals drive it down to help the buyback? Maybe they just want to put them in a harder financial position. Um, one thing Mark's right about, if you do a buyback, those shares get retired, so your your start. Well, they get they're they're still in the issued and outstanding, but they get out of the float. That could be that could be a, that could be a positive. They are trapped, I think the one, but doesn't mean it's going to work. Doesn't mean it's going to work. It's just got everything laying there. It's like I don't know. I never went fishing. And uh, I'm not that much interested anymore in the gamemanship of the American dating scene, but it's like trying to reel one in. And if it works, it works, you know. Yeah, there's always one, Mark, but it doesn't, we don't get, we don't get. <laughs> It doesn't happen yet on one of ours. Yeah, I do. I know Celeste is the best. Celeste is the best. Celeste is the best. I'm not going to even try to pronounce that. But I, there's a couple of things there 
key money that interest me. I know the PE doesn't interest me. Low float does, profitable. And then that word. That might work. Well, uh, hallelujah. Um, that is a debate, isn't it? Um, I, I bet it might be both. It might be works and, and, uh, faith. Um, and maybe faith luckily will, uh, trump all. But I have a feeling we're supposed to try to do things here. And I don't know, I'm not particularly good at that, you know, the doing. If 10 million went into ZJYL, what would that make the price effect? 10 million. So you're saying if they covered the 10 million shares? Oh, I think I think there's going to be trouble. Look, before the split, the way I heard the story is the stock could go to 20 or 30 thousand dollars a share or higher or higher. It's a very simple story. A group of high net worth investors who know each other own the entire float. They own the entire float. The insiders own the other 80. Basically, they own the other shares. They own 80% of the outstanding shares, which I recall was 7 million something. So it's the insiders plus the, the, the float. And these guys own the float. They're not selling. Add to that the rumor that there's 10 million pre-split shares Short, trapped, underwater, pre-split by about $200 a share. And you start seeing that the pressure is building on the short positions. But it doesn't mean it has to work. It's just got everything there that might work, might work. And I... I think you'd kick yourself, and that's what you have to ask yourself. Would you be angrier if the stock goes from what now is $160 down to zero, or if you sold here and it went to, six, to I don't know, $500? Hello? I'm still on. These guys are driving me crazy. I'll swell. You're the you're just what they need. Now there there's all sorts of questions on ZJYL. What happens if it doesn't move this week? And uh, those kind of things. Hang on, I gotta get my speaker back up. Sorry. Battery 40%. Connected mm -hmm. to Bill's iPhone. All right, should work. All right, number one, uh, a friend of mine is a broker. He had a, he has a sizable order to buy in that uh, TELO. Where did that close it, William? I'm in the car. All I have right. no idea. There's a couple of other stocks to ask you about. And I, All right, but it's, I just wanted it. I know. Let me look at TELO, hits a new. 
pi, hang on, um, t low uh, closed at 701, up 76 cents. So people were starting to figure out what we knew about for two days that the stock got hit down fairly and you know what. And I did speak to a buddy and he said, he, he says that well, he says that 90% of the time the companies will come out with news after the IPO price. So maybe we get lucky and something happens there. CJYL, I don't I have no idea where to close that. I have no idea. Hang relax, everyone. It closed at 850, up 19. Up 19. So the stock busted out to whatever, $12 free market. No, that's eight came. times two. So that would be. Oh, you're saying pre-market. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it was up to twelve dollars. I yeah. know somebody who sold it eleven dollars and some cents. He said, and he bought it back at nine or something like that. So he paid seven, made two, so he owns it at five dollars now. There's always risk, people. So what you try to do if you're going to be in it, you lower your risk. If you're upside down on it, you're like me. You have to wait. Do you believe it? That's the whole thing. Do you believe? I believe that the big boys are still here. The volume doesn't show me they exited. And if they weren't selling it at 250 to 300, whatever it went to, that means they're still here. That's proof enough for me. I don't have verification where a guy's getting on the phone and saying he's him and his friends. And just to be clear, that. 250 to 300 is 12 and a half to $15 now. All right. So that's, so that's what you're looking for. So, you know, if they weren't getting out then, I don't think they're running out now. That's my opinion. That's what I see. The volume doesn't tell me that. And you know what? I, I don't believe they're dumping it. So that's what I say. GDC, I don't know where that closed. I see. Just keep your eyes on the road. 204, down five. Yeah, so, you know, again, it's, you know, I expect that to follow the other one. I've been in it. Um, as they say on Wall Street, I'm long and I'm wrong right now. That's what happens. You can't be right every day. You can't buy a trade, you can't buy a stock and cash out three hours later. That's what everybody wants. I get direct messages from a lot of people looking for action all day long. What about this one? Can you do, I, you know, that's not my job. You got to figure your own bets out. You know, you go, you, you go do what you have to do. I don't want to be, you know, unless I'm hired as a money manager, I, I'm not doing anything. All right. That's, you know, I can only report what I see. And you know what? The opportunities that you make your own decision. You pull the trigger and that's it. All right. I don't get paid for it. So I, I don't, I'm just telling you what I see. T T E L O was an IPO that was destroyed on the opening. We all see it. I reported it. The opportunity to drive it, to get it, to go back up to seven is here and gone. Now it's at the IPO price. What's the next leg of an IPO? I'll always look for news. That's the end of that story. What's the news? The company's working to extend your life. You tell me if that's a bad thing. I don't. I think it's a good thing. All right, that's my opinion on it. So sometimes you got to read the stuff, do your homework on it. Thing of motion, where'd that close, William? Hang on, I should have had that up already. Um, it is two twenty close, down thirteen. Yeah, so it's you know here he is, the old down thirteen cents. The stock never went up with the market. Why is it going down when the market goes down? It doesn't make any sense. But again, there's no volume. I I, I described the uh, the cha cha back and forth washing. What's the volume? 180 something like that. It was 170 when I walked out. So it's, it was 171. Where could it be? Um, volume for the day 204. Oh, so they ramped it up at the end. So they they were doing a lot of wishing and washing here. Remember. They wash trades to move them around. They wash trades to buy more settlement time in case they're getting called. What do I mean by that? Morgan Stanley calls up e trades. Hey, you sold us 20,000 shares of the stock. You owe me delivery for it. And the short seller gets the call and he's like, okay. And he does, he does a quick wash and it resets the time on it. That's what I mean by washing it. All right. They don't free, they don't get, they get called in on stock, not all of it. You know, they may get called in on 50,000, 30,000. So what do they do? They wash it. If Wall Street was fair, they would be called in all the time. But they don't. So that's that. The GTI, 21, 22, same spot, same it, thing. Uh, I had it up before you asked that volume. It closed at 0.225. 
All right, so they got through the two, 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 whatever that is. Anyway, so there's the recap. You, you know, William, you can't say any more than we did. Are you, you know, go take the dog for a thrown snowballs or do something. You got to get away from the break. You take a break. I will. It's 420. Will. Go eat dinner. Go take a shower. Comb your hair. Take care. Comb your hair, as they say. You got to move along. It's, it's too much every day. The same thing. I answered every question for you up and down the ladder. Yeah. The market is the market's at highs. We've been saying it. Remember, all these guys, there was a story on Zero Hedge yesterday. Goldman Sachs was telling all their big institutions to start getting out of the tech heavy rally here. It's a called a crowded position. Everybody owns the same stocks. And trying to run out one door is going to be hard. All right. So that's what the market, you got to be careful because these stocks. They look great. Everything looks great. When they pull the plug, look out below. All right. So again, if you're long those in your pensions, you can move to the sideline a little bit. I've been saying that for a while. You can always re-enter back in. After it's down 10, 20 percent, you can always jump back in and protect yourself. All right, William, that's about it. So All right. my advice to you, William, give it a break. All right. I answer the question. You, everyone here has had enough of William for the day. And you know what? He's not like me. I, I memorize these things. It's easy. And you know what? You, William, you can't let it. You can't you can't carry the world on your shoulders. All right. All so right. take a break. All and right. they all appreciate you. And that's it. And I sent you the Woody Allen clip. That's me going into the cell. And I'm the insurance salesman. They put him into solitary confinement with insurance salesman as a punishment. Oh, I don't see that's it. it. Uh, that'd be great. I sent it to in an email. I said, here, this is Oh, it's me. in the email? Okay. Yeah, and it's Woody Allen going into solitary confinement. And with, an with an insurance With an insurance agent. Salesman. <laughs> so imagine being with me all day listening to this nonsense. That's what it's about. Anyway, listen, go take a break. I'm telling you to go take a break. It, it's a tough game, and we'll be at it tomorrow. All right, William? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Let's just go down these. Um... I don't see his uh, email. Oh, let's see. Never seen this before. Hey, Jack, Woodridge Insurance Company. Yeah, I'd like to talk to you. You're about 30, right? You know, I think the best thing to do would be get straight to life plus a little turn. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, I, I don't know that what you're, I think, covering 10 million shares or 20 million, uh, 200 uh, times 20 is 200 million. I think it goes to the moon if that's your question. I think it go to thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars. <laughs> They're just providing the liquidity. They're just providing liquidity. You know what? I'd rather have to pay the the old commission rates and and have a compliance officer with with uh, spine at every brokerage firm. AULT just did a one for twenty reverse. In January. Yeah, I would just be really careful. I really would be careful. That buyback is a gimmick. And those that's my initial read of it. And the shorts will see right through it. And, and you know, he's probably got one of those placement agents saying, well, here's what we'll do. With your stocks underwater we'll do a one for 25 reverse split then we'll announce a buyback and it sounds like a logical strategy to the ceo meanwhile the cohorts the confederates of the placement agent are destroying the stock stripping the stripping the market cap i don't know i'd rather i'd rather be a tick on the 
rear end of a rhinoceros with ZJYOL than being a zebra trying to run in the uh, other direction across the Nile River with crocodiles in it. Raka, what a joke. Look at Finger and GTI over the past months and months. All here still talking. Well, Raka, um, it is, I, yeah, I can see the, I can't see the humor in it, but I can see why you might think it's a joke. Uh, my suggestion to you, you, Raka, stop watching. Don't watch. Get out. And uh, Finger, I wouldn't sell necessarily right now. Because Finger, I think, has a series of very positive announcements. But maybe you lighten up. If it goes up to three, four, five dollars, lighten up on Finger and get out. GTII, I'm I'm not as positive on until the direction of the company is determined. Um, and that's happening at the at the board, you know, the board level. You can't. You can't control people's decision making. So if you need to get out of GTII, maybe establish a tax loss, go ahead and just move on. You know, move on. I mean, uh, there's other uh, places where people gather and talk about things. And maybe a better place is to go on uh, one of the space calls and talk about Day trading. I don't know, Raka. All right, Ernie. All right, I'll watch that video if I can get in there. Bought 20 calls at five cents. Finger 250s for this Friday. Um, well, it's you know it's a punt. I think I would buy. Uh, I would either buy in further in the money or I'd buy more time. Um, I think this Friday uh, is asking a lot. It's asking a lot. But um, if finger goes under $2, I would start looking out longer term calls and see what you can get. Um, um But I think if I were buying calls, I'd rather buy five of the, I don't know, I'm making it up, the August strike price than 20 now. Because if it runs, I can sell the five, buy 10. But I don't own any now. Uh, I made money as I was going up. But when I went to do that interview for the stupid truck, um, I just, I didn't, I couldn't look at my account and I had a, I really got killed on that last day. So the, the, uh, uh, criminals won, at, at least as it related to me. That's amazing that you can, <laughs> I never learned how to snowboard. I got wiped out couple of times and I don't think my legs are anywhere near strong enough anymore but I'd like to start skiing again I don't know about big news on uh, logic or CAUD this week uh, 
I said it could be. I don't remember saying it was going to be this week, but I said maybe I did. But I think I said before the end of February. I, I don't remember. But um, logic, I expect they're going to announce the buyer. It's the same story. They're going to announce the buyer, the reverse split candidate. Uh, the question will be, is it a... Uh, is it a uh, uh, is it a binding commitment or is it a non-binding letter of intent? So if it's non-binding, that probably won't make the stock go up gigantically, but it could make it move to five or ten cents. Um, it'll the the other question will be. If the company buying logic, the, the reverse, doing the reverse merger, buying the shell, if it's worth 400 million, which is really on the low end of the numbers I heard, and we get 15% of that, that's 60 million value to us. And if there's a hundred million shares out, you know, it's 40 to 60 cents. That's 60 cents. But if you use the amount of shares that are out there now, it's 40 cents, 40 to 60 cents in value per share to us. Um, and it'll become a New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ stock. They will reverse it into it as it happens. So the shorting by the shorts won't be helped. They'll, they'll get the benefit of not having to maintain as high of a maintenance requirement at their prime broker so they can take money out without paying taxes. That will help the shorts. Um, but... There's, there's a bit of Machiavellian about this for us. Right now, we just want to try to make some money in logic. So if it's worth 60 cents, the questions will be, There'll just be three risks if, if it's worth 60 cents. Is the valuation believable? Or can the shorts just short against some pie-in-the-sky valuation? I have no idea. But I assume the, the company will have a believable valuation, have a believable product, have be believable revenues, and hopefully even have some cash. Part and parcel with that valuation, if it's, if it's questionable and they need to go raise money, does the CEO know not to go to Jeff Easton or Seth Kramer? We don't know. That's a risk. The other risk is the announcement. Is it going to be a binding agreement or is it going to be predicated on an audit? If it's an audit, that's almost as good as binding. But could it have some other escape valve? I don't know, but we'll find out. And then the final uh, risk, as I see it, will there be restrictions on our shares or will there be delays on when we get our piece of this new co? I don't know how they would, would do that. We, we already own our shares, so I don't see how they could do anything. My, I think each of these have some credence as a risk but none of them are fatal. So then the question is, they've made the announcement. Logic right now is 2.5 cents. Does it go to 60 cents? Do legal shorts cover? Do criminal shorts cover? Or do criminal shorts keep selling? Um, 
I gave you those three issues. If that all settles out, maybe it goes as high as 30 cents. But it might only go to 10 cents or 15 cents. Whatever it does on the news, you're going to have a decision to make. Do I just take that profit, if it's there, and just stop looking at the screen? Or do I wait, depending on what the news says, it's this new, brand new, fantastic company. It's got the best product since uh, uh, Taylor Swift's rear end. And it's got a, it's got a, a perfume better than Kim Kardashian's or something. Maybe you wait six months and it's not 60 cents, it's a dollar. I don't know. That'll be up to you. But as a trade, this announcement coming of a reverse merger should make logic go up. Will it be this week? I don't think I ever said it would be this week. I might have said it could have been. I think I said I expected in February, but it was supposed to come through in when the DSPAC happened. And we're already in the third month since then. So I don't think you can count on anything. On CAUD, when when the Aubrey SPAC when the Aubrey SPAC D SPAC data logic. had four companies. Data Logic is what Aubrey Spac bought. Data Logic had four companies that were going to roll up into Data Logic at that time. That's November. But I think Aubrey Advisors ran a sting operation. That's in my judgment. And they have done over 100 Spac deals they didn't think that you should lock in those agreements with those four companies, which they didn't lock it in. So what happened is as Aubrey uh, Advisors partners, Polar and others, I don't know exactly, sold the stock down from 38 down to under $1, these four companies said, wait a minute, we don't want to do that anymore. You promised us making it up. One million shares valued at $12. Now you're giving us a million shares valued at 85 cents? Eh, we're not interested. That's what the criminals want. The criminals want that destruction so the good news goes away and companies can't use their stock as currency. So what do I think the good news is going to be on CAUD? By the way, I have no idea, but it's been November, December, January. We have a great new uh, CEO, Peter Boards, some great additions, Elizabeth DeMars, prime among them, to the board, terrific people added to the company. They've already raised money at this shitty valuation down at $1.20 which is where Aubrey Spac left them hanging. What kind of professional would allow a company to raise just enough money to not have any money? You got to think about that. But anyway, they, they, they got enough to survive and they still have those three or four companies ready to merge. So that what do I think the news is going to be? I think there's going to be, um, I don't know what to call it. I think there will be a joint venture with one or more of those four companies. I mean, I, I don't... I. I can't create how it would be, but it would be something like we agree to go back to our agreement in November. 
we both recognize that the prices today are fraudulent. They're fraud. They're illegal. They are Aubrey Spack sting operation on us. Everything I say is in my judgment and opinion. But they may say, you know what? Let's just do it on the basis we said, or maybe slightly increase it. Let's do the value instead of $10 a share. We'll do it at $7 or something like that. Not the $1 it is now. But how can you do that? Because the stock's down here. Well, one way to do it, I think, would be to do some sort of joint venture. We'll run our books together. We'll bring our teams together. We'll report our profits and everything together. But we will wait six months, nine months, a year to price our deal. And this is the parameters of what we'll have. So what does that do? That brings in the revenue. That brings in the uh, cash flow. That brings in the earnings. That starts making the revolutionary story, which I think is what's coming for ad tech and martech, advertising technology and marketing technology that's going to target the 50% of the market that is not Amazon, Walmart, uh, uh, whatever the hell else is out there that's in the big, the big names. Then I think they will bring in the next company and the next company and the next company. So I think CAUD has a chance over the next few months to get to 15, 20, 25 dollars a share. The problem at CAUD now is they're getting advice that all that's wrong with their stock is algorithmic trading. Certainly, algorithmic trading is part of it. But they are getting advice that all they need to do is get the stock to trade over 240 or something like that. And it'll go back to the races because the buying will come in. I don't buy that. I think that's part of it. What I buy is the company needs to show massive increases in revenue, massive increases in cash flow, massive increases in profitability on the near horizon, projected for 2024. And how do you do that? You add to data logic those four companies and you try to get the valuation of the ad at a higher price. In fact, you don't do the deal unless you get the valuations at a higher price than this counterfeit price at a dollar. That's what I think the news will be. Uh, on CAUD. I don't know if it'll be this week. I don't know. Could be, but I don't know that it's coming this week. This week with CAUD, they went before the uh, NASDAQ to re ring the bell. And uh, those are ways that NASDAQ gets you to think that it's a premier exchange. Under the leadership of Adina Friedman, it's just a better slaughterhouse. It's a, you know, a nicer, the music's nicer. The drapes are nicer. The, the waiting room is cushier, but it's still a slaughterhouse for, for CEOs and companies because she doesn't enforce, she does nothing to enforce the rules. She, she came from Carlisle. So whose side is she on? Anyway, that's what I think. CAUD's next announcement, whether it's this week or next month, is is going to have to be uh, that they're starting to at, combine these acquisitions in, and they'll feed on each other. And as uh, it's like adding logs to the fire, the first one it doesn't look, and then the fire starts. You add another, you add another, and you add another, and all of a sudden, you have a roaring embers and flame. That's what I think is coming for CAUD. But I think it's going to take months. All right, let me get to the bottom.
I I don't think Matt's banned. I I never banned Matt. Lion, I never banned Matt. Um, I don't know how to unban, unfortunately, but I never banned Matt. He's totally welcome to be here. Let me see what PS71 did. Stole my DBMM vocal MMAT and GNS today. Great. But see, I think CAD is great. You might have to wait just a while, but I think that's okay. I, my view is you add while you have a chance and LGIQ. I think LGIQ is going to be a trade this week, next week, following week. I don't quite know, but it's time for that deal to get announced. And then I think HNRA is a cash dividend. I am starting to get wind that GoLogic and uh, uh, RCRT might finally be do, doing something. I'll let you know about that. And of course, there's some other stocks out there, but I like what you're doing. DBMM, you got a high on the stock. Vocal ain't going anywhere. MMAT, because of the board's view, it's going to have a hard time. GNS, that guy's just a. Uh, anyway, I I applaud you. Let's let's um, CAUD. I think can go to 10, 15, 20. I really believe in the in Peter Boards. I think he is going to do out of the box strategies to get out of this the quicksand that Aubrey Advisors put him in. Um, or either by incompetence or on, on purpose. They did a hunt over 100 D as SPACs. You don't think they know what they, they, they knew what they were doing. Logic, I think you're going to get a trade uh, presently. Uh, does it mean this week? I don't know. I, I think, let's just say by the end of February. And of course, you know, it's a prediction, not a promise. Finger is in a consolidation. Um, two is major support. It's been up and above. Yeah, I think two is support. I think if I think if I read the market correctly, um, what the criminals are trying to do is to get it back below two and even into the mid ones to try to just sap all the energy out of it. But there, there are good things coming. Uh, the question will be, can they do that regardless of the good items? I don't know. But what, what I was answering, Lion, is in terms of buying calls, I think one of the strategies that I've had the best luck with in the past in, in other stocks in, is when something I like gets oversold. That's what I'm talking about. because. Things don't go just to where they should go. Sometimes they get oversold. Sometimes they get overbought. But if it gets oversold sitting there, the premium comes out of those calls. And then it starts to make sense to buy them. That's all. Yeah, I'm down. Um, well, anyway, I, <laughs> I'm down quite a bit uh, myself. Um, but you know what will happen since you sold those? You won't think about them again. And they might they might become trades again, but then you're back in it with the mindset of a trade rather than, you know, being stuck. So I, I, I appreciate it. Um, thank you, Lazy. Listen to him. It's all I ever do. <laughs> ZJ Wiles up. Um, yeah, I like this idea uh, Lion has. Where I disagree with Ham and Lion, uh, maybe, I'm not speaking for Lion, 
is I personally believe the most likely direction for the stock market over the next weeks, possibly months, is massively higher. I think we are headed to unfathomable highs. So if you buy puts, get ready to have bought them too soon. So maybe what you do is you buy a couple and then you buy two more and then you buy two more. Um, but I, I do agree that these stocks will become sources of capital. And if I had to predict where money's going to go next, it's going to be oil and oil companies. Because you just saw these the massive uh, uh, merger of of um, it's not Evergreen. Anyway, you saw the massive merger in the Permian. Um, I just can't remember the two names right now. Um, money will start flowing to energy again, and. Uh, and other stocks too. So, uh, but I, I like that idea of nibbling at puts. Um, I like that, kitties. It's the Fibonacci number. Um, it tested it. I wish I. I wish I had bought more. I didn't buy more bunny. I wish I had, and I might, I might, but I didn't buy more. I I um, put a little money in something else, which I'm not going to talk about. Just a penny, literally, a, you know, a penny stock. Um, but yeah, I might buy more. I bunny, I might round up to 400 shares. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I know, Bill, I do, I do. I don't know um, something wrong with me. All right, I'm going to go outside. Oh, that's interesting, kitties, O-T-L-Y. Um, I think that's a good move, Cliff. Um, it doesn't mean that it's going to work, but it doesn't mean GTI would have either. And if you can resist buying GTII back for 30 days, uh, it'll be hard if it run, starts to run, and it doesn't matter. But if you can resist for 30 or 31 days, you, you've established a tax loss, which is valuable, believe it or not. It is valuable, particularly if ZJYL were to run. What I like about ZJYL, it doesn't matter what we do. It's all up to the battle between the whales and the and the and the criminals. I didn't get to say hi to him, but thank you, KYP. Hello, KYP. I'll come up and watch your match. It's all right. Don't, it's not a bad, you, you don't know. You don't know when you sell. It's hard to sell. You don't know. But what if Chuck's got a point? But what if ZJ? ZJYL goes to $500 a share. I'm making it up and it sounds fantastic. But if it did, you can take that money, you can buy back GTII, you can buy Finger, and you can put cash in your pocket. And even if you pay, let's say GTI went to 40 cents, you could buy your whole position back in GTII, even though you paid more, and still put cash in your pocket. So it's, 
it's not a bad it's not a bad strategy our frustration is every thing, single thing we touch they I, I that guy kevin yesterday i think he had a point i think they just sell it off and sell it off everything because they don't want ham to have a win they don't want you to have a win and they they don't want you to have money to go into the next deal ultimately they they want chuck grasparino to have validity and they don't want guys like Kristen and busy and the rest to to um to uh to um gain a following. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. You got to take a deep breath. breath. Is it going to move? But one, Lion, if somebody gave me money today, if somebody walked in my front door and said, you just won the prize for being the calmest, unflappable, uh, kindest, never losing your temper, never showing frustration, live on YouTube award, here's $100,000. I would, I would put some cash aside. And let's say I took, I don't know, half of 50 grand to put in the market. Which one would I buy right now, GTII or ZJYL? If I only had those two choices, I could hedge a bit, go buy a little bit of one or the other, but the preponderance of the choice, which one would I buy? I would buy ZJYL right now. It, but the risk in ZJYL, it has far, further, farther, furtherer, as they say in North Carolina, furtherer to fall. But so does GTII. So anyway, I think ZJ, the one thing I was taught at Merrill Lynch, don't just sell for no reason at all. If you have a better idea, that's a good time to sell a stock regardless of what the price is of the stock that you're selling versus your purchase price. Yeah, I agree with that. I, they're, they're trying everything and we'll see. Yes, I had, I had uh, uh, lunch, I had lunch. I have conviction in GTII, so therefore I probably, but Lion, we're not all Rockefellers. We, we, we can't maintain multiple positions at once. Sometimes you have to be opportunistic. And, you know, in my opinion, Well, we'll see. I mean, that's what makes makes market markets. From it, from here, GTI is twenty cents. Where can it run without generating a squeeze? I mean, it could go to a buck. It could go to two bucks. That's ten x. That's ten times its money. Uh, ZJYL at eight bucks. Um, it could go, I mean, it sounds fantastical, but it could go to 80. That's 10x. Uh, very easily, it could go to 80. Uh, 500, well, 550 was the high that it just spiked to. And, and I think that would mean, um, a thousand. No, 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 that's wrong.
No, 550 would be 2750, 2750. And so if it were, to, I mean, it could go to 80. It could go to 80. But if it just broke out, ZJYL, and, and remember, ZJYL isn't tired. There's not people getting ready to get out. There's not skepticism. There's not, uh, it's not necessarily under control. It could go to 800. It could go to 800. That's 100 times where it's trading now. And that could all happen very quickly. It, it may not. But do you think GTII is going to go to $20 um, in the next, let's say, 30, 45 days? It might, could. But I think ZJYL could, could give you that uh, 100 times your money before GTII does. Then you take that money and you come back to GTII. Yes, there's the risk you're out of it. But the idea is to make money. It's not, I need to make money in GTII. The idea is try to make money. I like that. I like that recommendation. I don't know anything about it, but I like what you've written. O-T-L-Y. Thank you, Miles. I'm I'm just feeling run down. Um, yeah, exactly, Chuck. I look. I wish I had everything we're talking about. I wish I had that full. Wait, wait, there was um, a senior person at my office, big big producer, would say. I have a full position in Exxon, or I have a quarter position in uh, uh, Microsoft, and we're trying to, we're slowly adding to it. I hope to have a 50% position by the end of the month. And, you know, because you don't always get a chance to buy it all at once, you don't have all the money. The price action doesn't work with you. You're in something else you're trying to trade. So it's there's no perfect decision. And it is, at the end of the day, about trying to make money. It's not easy. That's I think that's right, Cliff. Not easy being cheesy. <laughs> well, that's fine too. You can sell both of those and go into uh, D. I guess DBMM is up. Uh, that's interesting. That's what makes a market. We'll see which works. Um, uh, I really think Logic is going to have a trade in the near term. Um, it's just a question of how high. It might just be the money you, you double your money, you know, but it could be 10x, although that's probably optimistic. I mean, I certainly think it could go to 5, 10, 15 cents. And depending on the strength, based on those three things I mentioned, how believable the valuation is, if there is a delay, like some sort of restriction or delay. Uh, time, time is money, and and uh, what was the other one I said? Um, can't remember what the other one is. I said. Um, anyway, if if oh, whether it's a whether it's a uh, binding or non-binding agreement, I think it, it'll be pretty darn close to binding. So. Uh, you you remove some of those uncertainties, you remove time, you could get closer to the 60 cents that I'm making up, but that's what I think it might be. Um, and then the question is, 
how high does it go before it stalls and I just want to take the trade? I don't know. But if it went from here to 30 cents, that's 10x. And uh, then you take that money and you go into GTII and DBMM if you want. Um, I think I'm going to, uh, for me, I think, depending on the strength of the announcement, I'm going to trade out of logic. Unless the announcement is so good that I'm going to say, you know what, I'll just wait six months and see what happens. But my, I'm inclined to sell. And I think I'll probably buy uh, – it just depends on what the profit is. Uh, if it's a small profit, I won't do it. But if I have a bigger profit, I want to try to get all of you thinking about as you have profits, take 5%, 10% of it and buy physical silver. I might do that. And then, I, you know, I'll look at these list of stocks and see which one I think is going to uh, have a trade next. And I'll probably buy that one. The CEO did not listen to Ham's advice and uh, chose chose to go it the way the smiling, lying faces directed him. That that's a very non-specific reason, but I think that's why it's dropping. Um, bad bad financing and listening listening to the Wall Street liars. There you go. I think that's great. I think that's great. And, you know, no one knows for sure what's ahead. But what if ZJYL went up and you could double your position in GTII? You don't have to buy it at the exact price. Maybe you pay 30 cents a, a share but you have enough money to buy twice as much. You did what you set out to do. So uh, I don't recommend chasing uh, from stock to stock to stock unless you're really professional at day trading. If you're doing that, ARCA and Avid um, <clears throat> and others might be sources of those ideas. I don't have ideas like that. I, I can see sometimes see the trade. Like I wish I had sold CAUD when I saw that upside down head and shoulders. I called it. I think I called it here. And I could have sold it and bought it back cheaper, but I, I didn't do anything. But um, I'm not a day trader. That's what I think. And then Jeff. The key is if it does run, and let's say it goes beyond uh, $25, $30, that's in all high territory. I think it's going to keep running. But let's not get too greedy. Maybe we should try to take our original money off the table um, or, or let it run. Either way, it's just know what you're doing. Just know what you're doing. Well, I, it's not six months ago. It was over a year ago. And I think GTII at that time was in a squeeze. And that's what was so frustrating to me. I mean, it's just the evidence I saw with my eyes. Um, can I prove it? No, because we did something else. And you can't recreate that situation. I don't feel like GTI is in a squeeze right now. A year ago, a, a little more than a year ago, uh, Fidelity was paying a thousand percent to borrow money. Wells Fargo took away the buy button. The stock was up. The, the warrants were being exercised, and there was pressure on Wall Street to cover the undelivered shares. 
that was a squeeze going on. I don't feel it in GTI right now. Do you, Chuck? I don't feel a squeeze in GTI right now. I don't really feel a squeeze in finger right now. I feel the tension building for a squeeze in ZJYL. Is it going to happen? GDC, same thing. I know from all the public uh, uh, information, logic is going to do a reverse merger. And I know it's going to be bigger than uh, uh, 250 million. And I heard when Brent came on here, the companies as big as 800 million were talking to him. So I used 400 million. I used 15% of that for us. So I'm pretty, pretty sure that's coming. And I, I, I'm starting to see it a little bit in the price. CAUD is trading with as if institutional buyers are coming in, which are the ones that can fight the criminals. They do their own research. I think Peter Boards is doing a great job and like I just said, I think they're going to come up with creative ways to do the roll-up of those one or two or three or four companies without massive dilution, without massive dilution per on a per share basis. So those are some of the ideas I I think, and HNRC I think is going to have a dividend. I think HNRA is doing this offering down here at a low price. They, it's too bad. But once it's over with, I think that can drift up to four, five, six, seven, ten dollars. There are stocks out there that feel like they're moving. I don't think GTII is in a squeeze. Uh, Roughly a year and a half, a year and a uh, month ago, a year and two months ago, I believe GTII was in the middle of a squeeze. I totally, everything, everything felt like it was squeezing. The pressure, the momentum, the energy. And I think the back offices were in trouble, but we're not in that position right now. And like you say, we went to Cosmo. I'm not telling anyone, Chuck, to move from GTII to ZJYL. I, I don't think it's a bad idea. People can make up their own mind. But the stock that feels like it's going to move right now is ZJYL. It'll be some other stock I've never heard of. I don't know about that stock. Why ZJYL? Because... I trust Tim's information, and I trust that these whales are in it. GDC, why? Ham bought it. Why would Ham buy it? He paid more. He overpaid, but he's not selling. I bought GDC. I overpaid. I'm not selling. But you, you never know when the squeeze is going to happen or if it's going to happen. But... But if the story hasn't changed, you wait. And if it feels like GDC and ZJYL are next. Finger, absolutely. I think the news coming could be a catalyst for that stock, doubling, tripling, and even, and even more. But I think Finger doesn't feel like it's squeezing right now either. Now that can change right like that. And I might be wrong, and and in one day, it's off to the races. But um, I'm talking too much on that issue. Well, AMC, I don't know what to say there. I don't. I wouldn't buy AMC, and I wouldn't hold it. I think they've got it all under control. But uh, George Donahue, who I met. And I really res respect. He works hard. He 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 um, uh, doesn't quit. You know, I would let if you need advice, I'd listen to him on AMC. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah. That, you won't lose. I, well, who knows? Who knows? Now, my eyes aren't better, and I, I really got to go get my operation. This one, I, I passed the test, so I don't have to worry. I was worried about a detached retina. But it hasn't really, I don't know, those eye drops, I guess they didn't leave yet. But I got to get this operation. I'm hesitant. There's five different choices, and I haven't made up my mind. And uh, um, I keep putting it off, but I got to go in and get it done. I don't think you typed that question the way you meant it, or I'm, I just can't make sense out of it. But yeah, a company can borrow money from a regular Joe. Yeah, I mean, a, a company doesn't have to go in the market. It just all has to be disclosed. All right, I believe you, Lion. I believe you, Lion. Yes, a regular Joe can finance a company, but all human beings, Mexican, I've seen it. Uh, they all look at the stock price. And if, 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 I mean, I did it with an investor. I'm telling him about a gold story that could be worth $20 billion, and the market cap is $1.5 million. $20 billion, $1.5 million. That doesn't make any sense. Well, it's a shitty man, a shitty CEO. <coughs> yeah, it doesn't do anything to get the story told, but it's also <laughs> anyway. That's where some people see opportunities, and they get rich when they act on them. Others need uh, need the comfort of the crowd. Um, but yes, the, the only requirement is they have to disclose it. But they, they, the company will have the same problem. Even if he's a good guy, he'll say, you know, your stock's at 50 cents. I want to do it at five cents with warrants. Um, what would be great is if you could get somebody to come in and say, you know what? I'll do your stocks at 50 cents. I'll come in at $5 if you use the money in this, this, and this way to increase profits. And if you can get other, you know, I don't know, another set of investors to match me. And, and, and then, you, then you start beating the shorts. It's hard to do though. The psychology is, hey, the stock's down here. I want that price. No, I know. I'm not. Look, I'm not saying you have to. Sign up. Everybody's got to do their own decisions. I just, I understand, um, and and that's how I would put it to myself if I had new money. Which one would I buy? Or would I buy both? Or would I buy another company? Yeah, Jeff. I, I love your position in GTII. That's fantastic. I hope it works. Um, uh, I wouldn't mind getting getting my position that high. Well, not selling at a loss. Okay. Uh, next month will be another stock that's like it came out of nowhere. Yeah, there could be other stocks that come out of nowhere. Look, ham is ham talks probably to two hundred different people a day, and people call him with ideas, and he suffles through them. 
and he hears the one that makes sense. Yeah, there'll be another stock story. Keith, it's not about making money in... Uh, uh, I need to make money. I'm going to go in the stock market. I'm going to buy one stock and that stock better work. I'm going to make money in it and I'm not selling until I make money. It doesn't make any sense. If it's about money, you, you do have to. But you know what? Most of you may not feel comfortable trusting uh, an idea that's not fully fleshed out. To me, if Ham calls with an idea, and he's heard it from somebody, and then this, boom, 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 and he believes it enough, I think it's worth putting a few shekels into it. See what happens. But the hardest part for me is selling when it's up, because then I start believing it's going to go to the moon, and I start believing my own spit, and instead of just taking the profit, and sitting out the uncomfortable months while it looks like it's going to go higher. You know, I don't know. Anyway. Um, all right. So I reached the end. This is the end. The end, my friend. This is the end. Well, see, GTII VO Warrior, I swear it was squeezing. But those the other side was clever. And make no, no mistake, the, the other side fought with every power they had. All right, so I guess um, I can't play find anything to play for you so um we'll just leave it there. All right, so I'm going to sign off um uh, yeah, I'm going to go take Lucky for a walk and, uh, you know, tomorrow is Ash, tomorrow is Ash Wednesday and, uh, we'll see how we get through the next days. Wow, Julie, 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 I didn't know that. Let's look. <laughs> not on my, it's not on my easy ones. I looked at so many others.
Wow, you're right. 920. Wow, Julie, that's pretty cool. I don't I can't tell what the volume is in the aftermarket. But that's pretty cool, huh? So if it goes to 10, that's like 200 pre pre split. Um vocal was the flavor of the month not too long ago. I I you I don't know your sense of time, Keith. But to my memory, it was January, possibly December, but I think it was the first week of January last year. It's over a year ago. That and 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 of course, I think you're just trying to be uh, simplistic and dramatic. But the uh, CEO of CRTD, which changed its name to Vocal, uh, no one knows if it was he who called off negotiations. He he renegotiated upward. He had the opportunity to be bought by GTII for $3.30 a share. Yes, it would have been shares of GTII, but he also would have gotten the entire support of the whales behind him. I think he asked for $5, and they may have told him to go pound sand. He, after weeks and months of that being out there, he walked away. You ask me if he made the right choice, and you're going to say it was the flavor of the month? Keith, I'm going to start a second channel, and I'll just pick one stock, and I'll talk about it for five years. And you can come be my first customer. Well, thank you for pointing it out. Um, I lost a lot of money in CRTD. I lost more money than I should have. I called in and said, it looks like this deal isn't happening. Oh, yes, it is. It's happening. He confirmed it. And then that afternoon, he backed away. And I took crushing losses. So thank you for pointing it out. I am firmly aware, and it wasn't flavor of the month. It took, it took, it took uh, three, four, five months to build to that situation. And then I, to me, he made a completely boneheaded decision. But who knows? It might have been the right decision at that time. It's not. It's not the only factor in the demise of CRTD and, and vocal, but it certainly took all. And then he went on a campaign to get the hot money out of his own stock. It's almost as if he was paid by Jeff Easton to destroy his own company. But I think he's an honest guy. I don't think Jeff Easton is. So I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, could you imagine that channel? No flavors of the month. No moving. Just one stock. Well, today in the news for uh, uh, DBMM, uh, the stock was up. But it's still uh, underwater because there's over a billion shares and and the Kramers have their clients shorting it. And let's talk about that for the next six hours. You're first. Keith, you're first. All right. What's your question? All right. 
Well, yeah, with DBMM, and we'll be here tomorrow to talk about DBMM. And we'll be here next month talking about we're, we're not going to have a flavor of the month. We're never going to talk about anything else. I mean, it's nonsensical, completely nonsensical. All right, I got I to gotta run and go take the best boy in the world, even though he's old. Still the best boy. Every now and then he looks like a puppy. I like to make him happy. So anyway, all right. So I'm going to say good night. Peace.